Right. Okay. Bye. All right. It's uh, six thirty-three. <laughs> I'm calling to order the January fourth meeting of the EDC. The agenda is has a new item on it: approval of minutes, which I think we have not done since two thousand and nineteen. Citizen comments, as always, if there are comments about what's on the agenda, if you don't mind waiting, we'll hopefully be able to include your comments. If you have comments on other things, feel free to make them at the beginning. Um, we have five items on the agenda. It's all essentially new business as we did last month. We have, I think, one applicant tonight. We have a process for giving early preliminary feedback to grant applicants um, so that they can you know, get a sense of our, we can get a sense and they can get a sense of their grant application. Um, there's also a process, which I won't go into tonight, but I think the new platform that we're using will allow EDC members to pose questions in the 10 days between when the applications are due and, the, and our annual meeting to have those questions seen by everybody, including the applicant, and have the applicant put in short answers so that, uh, Michael, again, back to your yep. good objective of having as much back and forth as possible, we can use that 10-day period to whatever mm -hmm. degree we want to. The second item is an overview of our current communications program and options for 2024. No decisions tonight. This is a briefing in preparation, as Greta will explain. Um, an initial discussion of a long-term program to add another 30 plus housing units uh, to our housing incentive, to our housing program. Um, a brief discussion of some work in progress for downtown rejuvenation and agreeing on a process also i think a brief discussion for launching later this month the efforts to analyze the 60 plus ideas that were developed in eight or ten categories to address the issues caused by tourism and opportunities are there any additions or deletions to the agenda seeing none um is there, there, is there any discussion of, well, actually, we have a discussion after the motion. Could someone make a motion to approve the minutes of December 7th? Greta? Second. Second. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Any, Mariana, can you tell us that you're voting positive? Because otherwise we have to take a roll call vote. Yes, aye. Okay, thank you. Any opposed? No? All right. Minutes are approved. Um, feedback provided to applicants of the community grants. The community grants are due January 17th. You may look forward to a flurry of announcements in the listserv that I will post to remind people. Um, I, I think, um, wait, the recording is in progress, is that right? Yeah, she just okay. joined the meeting, so it says that for any new tour. Oh, I see, right, okay, thank you. Yep. And you'll turn your speaker off, so mm -hmm. okay. Um, I think Peter Rumanier from Bookstock is an applicant who would like to get feedback. So Peter, we've had some technical issues as you partially experienced. So I don't think that anyone or many people have seen your application. So just give us a two minute overview and um, any questions you have of us. Right. <clears throat> Thanks a lot, John. Um, we came back uh, from, uh, from a pandemic hiatus in 2022 uh, with a significant uh, augmentation of human resources. Uh, we grew in 2023 with more resources. And at the present time, we have double or triple the amount of people on task on a 12-month basis for running the festival. The festival coming up, uh, coming up in June 23, 21, 23, is pretty much the same overall design. Um, we uh, feel the design is adequate, but is always subject to major improvements. Uh, we've done surveys of, um, of, of uh, attendees and estimates of traffic, which we feel are adequate, uh, though they could be improved. Um, we are seeking ways to advance the visibility of of Bookstock and Woodstock itself, because we are blending our marketing of Bookstock with the marketing of Woodstock. We're looking for ways of expanding that significantly without overburdening the town. We believe that at 2,500 
up to 1,500 attendees. We are in danger if we were to significantly increase that of overburdening the town. So we're trying to find creative ways of doing what we do, but in a way that's more visible nationally and without burdening the town. We've had some conversations on the side with John about that. Uh, we continue to look at that. We have several strategic initiatives undergoing right now. Um, that's my simple statement. Um, do, you have any, do you have any questions for us as to how we would, you know, at least right. just tell, tell us, <laughs> uh, right. tell us um, others, how much are you asking for and for what purpose? Okay. Uh, in in 2022, we asked for $20,000, 23000 uh Twenty thousand dollars, and this year we're asking for thirteen thousand dollars for several reasons. One is that we should be building our own resources directly. We should not be leaning on EDC on an ongoing basis. We should trim it down gradually over the next few years, and conceivably not ask for it in two thousand twenty-five. Um, so that's what and and what we use it for is basically general operating expenses. Um, there is a grid uh, that I gave to John, which John, I realized just a few minutes ago, there's an error in, so I'll send it to you again, um, which basically says that the um, about half our expenses are general operating expenses, which including the promotion and staffing. And that's where we believe it's uh, from an accounting standpoint, it's useful for both you and us to consider your money. Uh, what I'm really what we're really interested in is how you as a uh, in as a, where you sit right now, the agenda you have, how you see us as as adding to the value of the image of book of Woodstock as a cultural destination, both within Vermont and within region and nationally. That's what we aspire to be, that Woodstock be a cultural destination for the entire country. Uh, and any thoughts you have about that and how we perform and do that well or do that badly and how we could do it better is much appreciated. Are, are there any from EDC members or any questions um, of Peter? Folks online, you'll have to remember to either wave your hand or <laughs> raise your digital hand. Peter, I, I sorry, Deborah, are you raising your hand? Oh, you're muted, Deborah. All right, well, you know, while you're doing that, why don't you, you go ahead and make sure to unmute. You're not muted on Zoom. I think your computer is muted. <laughs> mm, we can't hear we you. Get the shaking of the head, but well, let me just go ahead while you're. If you join the computer up. Yeah, maybe rejoin. Is the suggestion? Um, put, put the he, question in in the chat. Put Deb. the question in the chat. That's a good idea. Yeah. Um, while you're doing that, Peter, uh, just a suggestion not to discuss now, but later tonight, and you don't have to stick around. You can, uh, but there's documentation of the goals that we uh, right, largely agreed with sort of directionally last month. We're gonna have another discussion of them slightly revised tonight and, and certainly at the next meeting, we'll, I think, finalize them. Um, those goals, the idea of tying in marketing, your marketing with Woodstocks mm -hmm. and thinking about how Bookstock as an event uh, benefits and builds Woodstock, I think is a very important, it's something that I, I would at least look positively on. Um, one person who I'm seeing is nodding her head. I will say that making Woodstock a cultural destination is, is not, those are not the words that we used in our goals, although I don't think it's inconsistent with our goals, but there are some other goals that you might look at, for example, trying to attract people to move here. But that you might begin to be able to think creatively about how Bookstock could enhance that. And it might shift a little bit what you message and even possibly, you know, not particularly your events, but but 
but maybe a small part of it. For example, maybe you have a booth with realtors <clears throat> or something like that. Again, I'm not trying to problem solve tonight. I'm no, just sort of no. pointing you in that direction over the next no. month or two. I think you should keep your finger on the pulse of, uh, or at least before you, the application is due, keep your finger on the pulse of what our goals are for our communications program. And if you like, the more you can identify the way in which Bookstock can enhance those goals, I think the more points you'll, conceptual points you'll get. So. <clears throat> okay. Um, if 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 we can, if, I hope we continue with you. But even if we do not, even if we don't get any funds, um, and I hope we will get some, we really would benefit by the by an active participation, not necessarily of an EDC member, but somebody who can represent the kind of goals you want for us to have, and represent that on a fairly active basis in our marketing, which which moves moves you know basically from week to week between now and June, and then from June throughout the, the rest of the year, having an active presence by somebody who can articulate it at meetings would be extremely valuable, okay? We're having a marketing meeting last, tomorrow night, for example, and were we to have someone there who can say, this is what we think you guys should be doing, would be very valuable. So I'm gonna ask Greta, I, I, whether we can attend weekly meetings or not, I don't wanna speak for others, but but at least Greta Calabrese is the, and Marion Abrams are the two EDC members who are involved in that. So I'll just leave it to Greta and you to connect. And Yeah, Peter, I'll send you an email. I'll get your contact from um, your application and send you an email. Okay, now let, let me ask you a housekeeping question. Um, the deadline is the 17th, but it seemed to me the only way we could do something is to actually submit something. And I submitted something uh, which, John, I, I realize you then flipped it back to the draft. So we have a chance until December the 17th to change it as long as it stays at draft. Is that right? Correct. There's, okay. no reason, there's no reason to push submit until the last day, as long as you don't forget. Okay. okay. And, and just bear in mind that the financials I sent you, the, the grid uh, is an error. Okay. That's fine. Uh, we'll wait. Okay, good. Um, is it Rachel, Gretel? Uh, Greta, yes. Um, if send me your email if you can tonight, and if I want you to consider sitting in on at least some of the meeting tomorrow night at six. Okay. Um, um, I mean that I I cannot underscore the importance because reading something in a document, an EDC document, is fine, but having someone say, you know, you guys, you're missing something, okay, or we really like that, we want more of it. That has, that has enormous importance for us, okay? Because okay, we, we frankly see ourselves as marketing the town. You okay. go on our website and we're marketing that, which is, by the way, very different from other literary festivals. You go to other literary festivals and you don't really know and you don't really care what town they're in okay? um, from their websites. We study other literary festivals to see what they're doing versus what we're doing. Uh, so we, we, I mean, given the whole, the way we use the green, very, very geographically specific and unique to Woodstock. We will never do online uh, in any any significant way, any online author sessions, because that does not reinforce the town. Okay. So are there any question, other questions for Peter or comments? Peter, I, I would just uh, first say, great. The last book, uh, Bookstock, was awesome. I thought it was I'm really excited to hear that you're coming back with the same programming kind of style. And I thought that it was really, really wonderful last year. Um, on the traffic concerns and what you're doing to, you know, either alleviate, uh, alleviate or manage or measure the traffic concerns on town uh, and some of the, you know, pieces you're talking about not trying to grow outside of our, our britches maybe a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. If you could go into that either not now or maybe we can talk about it offline. I think that would be something that might uh, suit or really help uh, towards the application. That would be useful. Um, and what I could do with um, offline is uh, to go through the uh, attendee survey we did last summer uh, and the uh, estimation of traffic, um, yeah. which we did in 2022. That's, right. That's great. I look forward to hearing from you. Any Anything else? Okay, oh, sorry, Deb. Yeah, I think you're still muted. We can't no. hear you. We can see you talk. And we, you're not muted in Zoom. Um, 
Maybe it's your microphone volume, Deb. I'm gonna mute it and then I'm maybe ask try you signing back on with computer audio. I've, oh, sure, do you I've just asked you to unmute, but the I mute. There you go. Say something. No, and it's your computer. It's not Zoom. Maybe All she's right. not really speaking with audio and messing with us. That's true. She could be. Thanks, God. <laughs> Panamiming. All right. Well, uh, um, in any event, I. Yeah. Okay. All right, Deb. I'm sorry. We have to. We've got to move on, but keep keep trying. Or Greta suggesting you rejoin. I didn't go off and rejoin, but I don't know if you did that or not. But... Yeah. She's typing. Type. Yeah. Uh, no, those were from. Or those are um. Okay. About Marion's illness, which okay. we all. Yeah, sorry, yeah, Marion. Just, like just try good. quitting the whole app and coming back. That usually solves it. If you didn't already, you may, you may have the, your microphone off on your base on your computer itself. All right. All right. Well, you know what, I, I, Deb, I'm just in the interest of time. I'm, we're going to move on. There is going to be an opportunity, as I said, for individual EDC members to send questions to applicants between the 17th and the 29th, or is that the 29th? I think is the day of the annual meeting. Yeah. Um, and uh, I can move down. We need to. So. Um, so Deb, you'll will be able to direct your questions to Peter, or obviously you could just contact him. Okay. Next on the agenda is a review of the current. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Peter. Sorry. Um, next on the agenda is a review of the communications program and what's in options for 2024. And I need to share different. Jennifer, okay. would you like to come there? Right? We go. Have a chair ready for you. I was wondering what you were doing there with the chair. Something fishy over there. Yes. This. We all kind of have. Yeah. And would you like us to stand there? Yes, if you do, I'm just. Gonna... Sorry, I will. I can just say master. Are you nexting? Um, there's a message from Deb Green. Oh. Wanna check that? Peter, we will be setting up a meeting with you to create a review of your last grants, and I can ask the questions then. It will be helpful to understand budgets, growth, and where else you are getting grants and sponsors. I'll send an email and we can talk further. Thanks. That's from Deb Green. Deb Green. All right, thank you, Deb. Okay. Okay, we can we can start on the next slide. Easier said than done. <laughs> yes, thank you. Um, so hello everyone. Jennifer and I are gonna go over our um, presentation of our current marketing and communications program and um, what our goals are for next year. And you can kind of see our our outline here. Jennifer is gonna be presenting um, in the beginning about this past year and what the goals were. And um, Jennifer, for those of you who don't know her, is the current head of marketing of the Woodstock Inn. Prior to that, she also worked at Sugarbush and the Trap Family Lodge, which gives her a lot of experience with communications programs and other communities in Vermont. And we are very lucky to have her volunteer a significant amount of her time and expertise to our marketing working group. So she's gonna get the meeting started and then I'll go through the other goals and how our goals are shifting and um, present two plans, plan A and plan B, that are options for 2024, go over those budgets briefly, and then we will have a group discussion. So we ask that you hold your your questions and comments for the group discussion part. And I'm, I'm just want to make a brief comment, try to put you under pressure here. And the same is going to be true for housing. We have two long presentations and so forth. So we'll okay, try to that. we'll try to be quiet and let's try to move as quickly as we can. So. Perfect. Great. We can go next. I think. Okay. Next. Yes. So um, I am Jennifer Vincent, director of marketing for the Woodstock Inn and Resort. I've been here for going into my tenth year. I do live in the village. Um, I've been working on the volunteering for the committee for almost nine years now, um, working closely with Beth and the chamber, and I'm very proud of all the 
um, continued growth that we do. And so now I'm here to explain um, what we accomplished this year um, with um, Class Floors Agency. Our goals were set in place to one, biggest one was lead generation from, a, from the website and to gather more valuable leads and also segment those into um, what um, people that were um, visiting us or interested in Woodstock, what, what their um, interests were. So from there, you go into email campaigns and content delivered to those to those leads and then um, continue to gr grow into um, creative and um, copy development is blog content, which also helps with um, people finding us organically on our website and also promotion of events and businesses and then pretty much overall making sure that our website is maintained and um, all the updates and content is currently ongoing. So right here, you'll see what our lead generation um, campaign looks like. There was two offers. Um, they were used to book a stay, win a stay in Woodstock. Um, we did one stay a, a month um, and this gathered um, many leads. We're, our, our database is now almost at 26,000 email captures. Um, you can see that one of the images is a, a picture of the inn. Um, just one ad, it created almost um, 4,000 leads. And then even just our iconic um, covered bridge and how people are like, see this pop-up window and then get their capture and then they get broken down into segments of what um, areas of interest and what they, what, what they want to hear from us about. So this is starting to build our communications platform. So then we go into social media, which is another big um, engagement tool that we use. Um, can't really see the calendar, but one of the things I wanted to highlight here, it's not just posting, it's not just reposting, it's really working together on having a calendar and making sure we have all the touch points, all the events going on in the area, um, move here, live here, um, what kind of um, activities are going on, shop here, all the things that we have that makes this community so vibrant is right on this social media platform. Um, and so there's that, that was just really a calendar, but those are like some like really beautiful posts that we use. Um, if you can go to next, cause this one is hard to see. Um, these are our um, two uh, um, top performing um, creative social um, posts that we did. Um, you can see that we also integrate not only just photos, we do video. So there's a family activities video about fly fishing and all the recreation you can do in this community and um, just really dr driving people in to see what, what happens here. Um, and that it has that video played 8,200 times. Like, I mean, just the people are engaged and wanting to um, learn more about us. And then you just have a beautiful drone shot of the village um, and foliage. And, um, and that had 5,000 clicks. And these are just like snippets of some of the top performing ones. There's many, many more, but we're on time, right? <laughs> 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 then um, the email campaign, this is our communication platform. So it's not just like sending out an email, it's really thoughtful, thought driven in the sense of what kind of creative we're using. A lot of this imagery and video, it's something that we worked with class for the first year. We went around and really gathered all this content and now we're using it throughout um, the years to, to get, gather more interest. So. Um, there's different ways of showing that. So that one, first one is like a, you know, welcome to the summer, May, um, what's going on in the community. And then then we um, have email blasts that this year, one of our big things is promoting some of our signature events. So there's the Taste of Woodstock um, email and really just highlights that one event. And Wassail Weekend, we um, did a lot of promotion on that this year. And then overall the winter activities. And if you see, like when you look at these, um, we have developed a very strong iconic brand for Woodstock BT. And you can see that relevant throughout all of this creative work that we've been doing. Um, it's really just brings a sense of place and makes people want to be here, makes people consider moving here, building a business here. It kind of just brings them brings them here. So, um, and each call out box is a different activity that would tie into another blog, which is bringing content back to organically to our website um, and having people that might not be on the email list, but they're searching for snowshoe hikes in Vermont and they come across us. So um, 
all these little, it's just not mm -hmm. one, like come visit Woodstock. It's definitely developed and built out um, thoroughly and thoughtfully. So if we go to the next, this is our blog page. So again, you are, um, hopefully people have gone to our website and started looking at some of the content that's out there. Um, there's why move here, why build a business here. These are a lot of the blogs that we built this year. They're evergreen blogs, so they will stay relevant throughout the year when people are searching for sugaring and Google is constantly looking for that content. If we stop developing content like this, they're not going to think that we're relevant and skip right past us or look at it as something that happened in 2014. So we're constantly, we've been revising those this year and building new ones. So La Faire was some of that new stuff. Um, Green Up um, Initiative was a new blog this year. I think it's very important to share our story as a community of like how we are um, sustainable and what we do here with the National Park and Billings Farm. There's a lot of um, great stories that we need to tell. And I think people that are considering a new location um, for a job or for a business or just to live and move, move their kids here to go to school. These are content driven pieces that kind of put that picture in their minds. So, um, am I going too fast? <laughs> okay. All right, perfect. All right, great. Um, so then um, one of our other uh, initiatives this year was to um, start showing how this communication platform can help drive um, impressions and um, visitors and more education to different events. Mm -hmm. So we did um, some, oh. some promotion with TEDx on Heartland Hill. So um, you can see right here with the stats, the, um, the impressions that we receive plus the open, open rate of 50% is huge. Um, so we worked through um, doing some blogs on that and organic emails with just dedication to, the, to that event. <clears throat> Um, the next slide will show that we also did an initiative for Giving Tuesday. Um, I think it's really important. Also, when I mentioned telling your story, people are interested in what our community does. They just don't um, want to think that we're here for tourism and getting people here to shop. Like We dedicate our time to our community and nonprofits, and this was a really nice way to say everyone's out doing Giving Tuesdays and we all got many of those emails, but just to tell our story um, and some of our not uh, our uh, nonprofits was a really nice way to um, utilize the communication platform and um, give some businesses that normally wouldn't get attraction um, a little bit more of a higher um, engagement there. Um, and then we went on to um, wassail promotion and really um, up that story. We did that with lead generation um, instead of like just anytime somebody went to hear, read more about wassail and what it is in the blog, then they got into a funnel into another lead. Like, all right, these people are very interested in this event. Do they know what it is? And we captured more leads on that for um, to win uh, two seats in the parade with Billings Farm and um, Vermont Flannel gave us two blankets for that. So we're just kind of working with the community as well and different businesses to kind of help promote our story and show how many great things we do here. And that we use channels, all four channels for that, the lead generation, the email campaign or um, social media and a blog post as well. Um, Small Business Saturday was another new initiative, and this is another way of showing how that um, the platform can use for e-commerce solutions for some of the smaller local, or not even smaller, all local businesses. And um, this was something so we would drive people that could do an e-commerce solution from their website. So we talked about um, Small Business Saturday and um, holiday gifting. And that was also done through the email channel. And we also did a blog on that as well. And again, the organic email, you can see just two cents. We had a 43% open rate. So the stats are there to show how um, our lead generation list really wants to hear from us and um, look forward to learning more about Woodstock B team. Uh, the last thing is July flooding. Um, so unfortunately, um, our community got hit by the flood and, and definitely suffered from that. But there was um, 
a lot of wonder about the state of Vermont and what was going to happen if we're going to have tourism um, or people coming to us in the fall. Um, the inn definitely received some calls on that um, and cancellations for its fall foliage. Uh, we at, went through, a got a budget approved because everyone was looking for that. So you can see that with just a small amount of money, we were able to get more impressions and that one organic email that's 51% open. There was no call to action on that. That was just to say how we were doing that we, um, the community su survived the flood and that we were open for business. And that was an informational email. And you can see how that worked um, and how people wanted to, to hear from us. And then with that funding, we went into foliage season. So you can see from like what we did with social, pay-per-click advertising, um, lead generation, how many new leads we got from that, as well as um, open clicks and through the email campaign. So it definitely um, shows that we were able to drive more when we wanted to turn it up a little bit as well in our marketing tactics. So, and then this is just an overview of who, who are our leads our guests and who is coming here. So you can see that we're definitely in the drive market with Boston and New York. Um, and uh, and that's who, who we want to attract right now. And so we can always just geo-target other things with pay-per-click advertising. You can always go into different market areas. But right now you can see that we're definitely in the um, Boston, and New York, Connecticut drive market. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, okay, so that was to give you an idea of the creative that's been happening over the past year with the goals that were given in 2023. So those goals for the communications and mar marketing efforts were primarily focused on attracting visitors and highlighting local events. Clearly, we feel those efforts have been very successful. And going forward in 2024, our goals look a little bit different and they're shifting towards um, these items here. So uh, going forward, we're focusing on attracting visitors who want to live here, who want to work here, who want to open a business or restaurant here, attracting visitors who want to stay in Woodstock and meaningfully engage with the community, attract visitors during the slower months, and communicate our events more effectively to both residents and visitors. And that, these goals are still, you know, yet to be fully adopted by the EDC as our official communications goals for 2024. But as of the last meeting, um, we did have mostly everyone. That, and again, these have kind of their the wording may look a little bit different here. Um, but as far as our mark, our communications platform for the last year being very successful, it's wonderful. But a lot of the feedback we've received recently is that during some times of the year last year, it was an unsustainable amount of visitors. And so going forward, the, this is a way that we have decided would be really great goals to focus on to shift our communications and hopefully make some changes. So through our, with our current communications program through class four, we're hoping to pivot to accomplish these new goals by um, you know, developing thoughtful email campaigns, blog posts, social media focus, and new content creation, highlighting job opportunities, information about our school system and child care options, spotlight on outdoor recreation and regional points of interest, local business highlights, sustainable builders um, for those who want to come and build a home here, effective events calendar, just to really build out um, that events page on our, our website, I think for both not I think, we all believe that for both uh, residents and visitors alike, we could use a lot more things to do on that calendar and also um, just, um, just a, a more in-depth look at day-to-day -day, um, on a monthly basis. And then perhaps also just using our communication program to, talk to those out there about a code of conduct um, once they're visiting Woodstock and what what our hopes are and what, um, you know, private properties are private properties and et cetera. 
So to be decided at our meeting in February, should we go continue on with plan A, uh, which is our current communications program with class four, while shifting the platform's focus toward our new set of goals, or we are also going to be um, proposing a plan B, which would be to hire an in-house part-time contractor to develop and manage a communications program with our new goals as their focus. This is the breakdown. I apologize, the, um, it's tough to read. Um, it's, thank God I have something right in front of me, so I apologize. <laughs> um, but basically, the we have the functions going down the, the left-hand side, and then what the comparisons are for plan A and plan B. Again, plan A is the current program through class four. Plan B would be, is less money. Um, it's also less, you know, it, it's gonna be a little bit less of everything. Now, um, the budget that we've proposed for plan B is $3,800 per month. That's taking into account the monthly bills that we need to continue on with, such as website maintenance and um, a program that would allow us to do email sends for a list of roughly 25,000 addresses. Um, and then it goes down from there. We're assuming we would be able to hire someone at $40 an hour to work 20 hours a week. So this is a part-time position that we'd be hiring for. Um, versus plan A, it is a full team of um, professionals from the class four agency and um, pretty hands-on full-time. So um, does it make sense for me to kind of go down through each one of these co columns with everybody or you're all able to read it, right? Um, okay. I think the one the one thing just to highlight is it's it's less expensive, it's less volume, and it's less sophisticated. Yes. The question is, which is a good value? But right. I think you've got a you've got more on the left in, of pretty much everything, and more cost. Can I just ask a super quick, like, just a? I just want to. This plan yeah, B has nothing to do with class. I thought class four is going to give us two potential options, but maybe I, that's not what this is, though. This is no, A no. is M and B is in house. If we find someone, Cor correct. Plan B okay. would going. It would be going a totally different. So do they say they won't give another option or am I just remembering things wrong? They specifically said that we could come to them with our budgeted number and they would okay. let us know what they could do under that number. Okay. All right. Sorry. Thanks. So don't be sorry. This We've actually got to the uh, question okay. and comment portion of our evening. So <laughs> yeah. Like, great presentation. Great job. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Susie, can you, sorry. I was just saying okay. thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Okay. okay. I'm Susie Stolls uh, with Stock Village. So um, yeah, I love the new goals. I, I, I love that. I'm really happy with that. Um, so we have this new school and we need to recruit people to send their children here. Um, I'm curious about the channels that you're choosing because like Facebook is, is a 65 and up club. Email is 65 and up. So um, like neighborhood that neighborhood thing website like so what are your plans for um, reaching sort of the younger demographic, the people who could be going to school, who, who could be sending their children here? Do you want to take that one or do you? Um, you I can, can start it. And I would also say, by the way, that if some yeah. questions, if we can't answer, yeah. them, let's record them. You yeah. guys record yeah. them and be able to respond to them when we have to actually allocate funds for this or not. Sure. So, well, okay. So when pivoting for the new goals, can you like do like surveys to figure out or talk to like Mike's wife and you know the the younger people the the women young women who are have children are the the big decision makers mm -hmm. so can you interview them figure out how they communicate because I know that they have like this WhatsApp group or something like that and that's how you can huh <laughs> but I'm on that okay um yeah so as far you know I would say the majority of people who do have school age children are on Instagram and definitely do engage in emails. I think that a big part of our goals going forward in uh, 2024 will be to get more locals on that email list and um, finding ways of funneling those those demographics, if you will. Like, um, you know, Charles from Class 4 was talking about being able to take a look at the 
the locations from the emails and figure out who should be receiving what about job opportunities and things like that. So there is a way of looking at our current list and how we can target people who are close by, but definitely a goal is to be attracting more um, locals to be signing up for these emails in the future. Greta, I'm going to jump in here for a second because the, we're not just doing Facebook, we're also doing Instagram. So it's right, an email. I just said that. Yeah, it's yeah. it's yeah, but we're doing Instagram now is what I'm saying. Yeah. What we well, if you want to do anything, analyze our current twenty five thousand name list, and we'll be able to tell whether we're reaching them or yeah, not. Yeah, there's opportunity to grow. There's definitely and, an opportunity at TikTok. One that's very local to school districts and yeah. by school clothes together and and bulk and things like that. Like, I think once we pivot, then we're going to yeah. go, okay, how do we segment this? How do, what, what are these, what are these people looking for? How can we get that? Do we want to tell a story of a young family that moved here? We have a few blogs, but maybe that's not all that there, right there. So you can constantly develop and find those areas to tell. I right, think that this would be those people. extremely helpful in um, getting over the fear people have of the new school because they positioned it that if we can get enrollment up, we can get, um, we can lower our taxes and people are like, but that's an F, but it's not really an F. It's something that we can do. So mm -hmm. you can make that strong. If I could just build on that point, it, it, I don't know when the timing of this is, whether it's in the 2024 program or the 2025 program, but the specific recruitment of more kids to come to this school comes from a target audience of certain towns in Vermont that don't have schools and don't have transportation to Woodstock. And the school committee, I think, is considering developing a marketing plan to achieve more school re registrations. I, to be honest, I'm sure it's a very rich environment to get people to move here with kids, but there are already people who are, quote, here. They live in Sharon and Hartland. Um, a ton of them live in Heartland and go to other schools, and not a lot of them come to Woodstock, partly because of transportation issues. So, yeah, the towns the towns offer buy-in. So, if you don't have the school, then you can pay the right. town will pay that money to go to another school's district. Exactly. Right. So, so that's a very very targeted digital marketing campaign. If our if 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 anyone can do it at that level of granularity, just keep your eyes open for both what Susie said and what this is. All right, other other comments or questions? I, I got a question for you Michael? guys. Um, so uh, thanks you for the presentation, the whole the hard work you guys have done into this. I think um, question on the tactic side of it, you know, where if, if I'm following you uh, right, the ad buys and things like that were paying to essentially boost what was otherwise organic content that you guys were creating, right? Um, why not lean into influencers? I didn't see anything about like paid influencer uh, stuff and that's, what's driving tourism to our town right now, right? Is influencers on social. Yeah. And so like I've done, I'd, I have done some marketing plans and stuff myself and it was always the best bang for the buck was trying to buy uh, influencers off to like brand and market the content. That's why we have celebrities do our commercials, right? Mm -hmm. uh, it's the people that people listen to and trust and I always look at, yeah. from my perspective, the end does a lot of influencer on marketing. We, we invite them in, we host them for dinners and meals, and they're they're seeing the community. So we feel like that these are the hashtags that you can use, Woodstock BT, like we give them kind of a, so we work with a PR agency out of New York City, and then that, so we kind of leverage that. So we're like, our spend for the community here, like, all right, why, why are we, why are we gonna use the, this funding? When, when it's also being held, being done through the community with Woodstock Inn and Resort. I mean, we could allocate money towards that, but is that the right spend for us right now? And with our budget being so small, we really are utilizing it in a different way. But it is being done, that's your point. Yeah, so it, 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 there is presence there. Maybe not enough. Well, and I think you should understand too, that Inn is very, very generous with with sharing their, their information with the, our marketing group. So we we leverage a lot uh, out of the from their generosity. Let's pay an influencer to move here. <laughs> uh, will they be an influencer anymore? <laughs> All right, we got a few of them. Yeah, um, yeah. I'm I'm guess I've got a little bit of skepticism that uh, with Plan A, if we're spending a hundred thousand uh, dollars, 
Um, and that's not to encourage more visitors. I don't know how you do that. Um, and, I, and we've heard a lot about the fact that there, are, you know, we're overloaded with with people in town. I, I, I'm a little skeptical about that. And if, in fact, our goals are much more modest, um, uh, then uh, like trying to get people to live here, where are they going to live? I mean, there's no place to live here. I mean, you can't find a place. And and we've all looked into open biz, opening up businesses. John, you and I have worked, looked at that some. That's a really hard nut to crack. And, um, you know, certainly marketing Woodstock during slower months is a, is a very worthy goal. And I would like to see uh, work done on that. But I'm, 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 I guess I'm pretty skeptical that we're going to spend $100,000 for that, those new goals. And not, in fact, also being uh, encourage a lot more visitors, which brings up a whole lot of different other questions. That's just my thought. So thank you for that. Um, what to kind of hopefully touch on some of the points you've made. I would say that we, as you can see in the goals page, it is still to attract visitors, but it's to try to attract the right type of visitors. We still want to support our merchants our local merchants and make sure that there are people coming into town uh you know given our local survey results 98 percent of the local community does understand that woodstock benefits from visitors and but what we're trying to do um especially given well anyway there there's there's some evidence that that you know the the number of tourists has gone up but the average spend per visitor has gone down. And so what we're really looking for is to, to attract- You don't really know, you don't know, you don't know that, you know meals and rooms, but you don't know anything else. I, I, watch would, I would wager. Well, yeah, it is a good, it is a we, good- We know 55, I'll share the data with you in a minute, yeah. But what I was gonna say is that, you know, the, the current level of visitors is not sustainable. However, um, if we really engage with the right people who are going to have a long-term relationship with Woodstock and stay, you know, wh whether long-term means staying for a full weekend, not just driving through, or if it means coming here, falling in love and opening a business or moving here, then I think that the sophisticated platform that we have through our plan A currently really helps us dive into the ways that we get those people's, the, those visitors' attention. So I, if that makes sense. You know, I think it's, can I, I, I let me I would add to that I, I think about it I don't disagree with what you've said at all Greta but I think about it from a slightly different perspective many of the goals that we have like attracting people to live here and attracting people to work here um, and also well let's just take those two can't be accomplished without first having those people visit that's unfortunate having what, having what John they it, we can't accomplish we can't convince someone to move here without visiting here yeah. i know the v word is a bad word or the t word even worse tourist <laughs> is an even worse word but unfortunately the things that we most importantly need to do which is to get people to move here um but by the way the, vermont has the largest average plot plots of private property in the united states by a factor of 50 percent the next uh, so we have the largest private land per private property in the country so there's absolutely room for people to move here remember this problem was caused over the last 40 to 60 years it's not gonna, the fact that we don't have a house on the many many acres that are uh, open in downtown today doesn't mean that we can't have more people living here it's going to take a long time but the, but uh, and it's unfortunate that visitors tourists coming here, not moving here, and not being interested in blocking traffic is a big problem. And those aren't the tourists that we want to attract or the visitors we want to attract. But to achieve some of our objectives, we do need to attract visitors. Now, to be perfectly honest, I'm not 100% sure how effective a communications platform can be to attract people who want to move here or to attract people who want to work here and so forth. But we have to try, in my opinion. We have to set that. We have to. We've set it as an objective. I think we should try using the communications platform as an example. The effort that you and I made. I think we, you know, we reached out to, I don't know, four or six businesses, 
And I would hope that this platform could figure out a way to reach out to four or 6,000 businesses. It might not work, but, and, and I'm, I wouldn't commit to this for 10 years, but anyway, our goals are, I think we all agree on the goals. So the question is whether or not this platform can go after them. And, and I think that because these goals are tough, I actually personally think that it's more of a call to try a communications platform as well as other things mm -hmm. to try to achieve them. I mean, we can debate that, but anyway, I just, that's a slightly another way of saying the, the word visitors is, un, is an unfortunate word because visitors take up space on the sidewalk, but if they're walking to the realtor's office, maybe it's worth taking up the space, but Go ahead. Uh, yeah, Joe and uh, Joe. Yeah. Um, maybe we're not seeing forest for the trees uh, in, in um, let me try to explain that. Right, right from the beginning of the marketing program proposal, I personally have had a feeling, um, and the way to describe it best for me is um, it was like inviting some very nice people to come to your home for dinner. 10 show up and you only have five chairs and a one burner hot plate to cook the meal on. I mean, we, we just weren't prepared for that. And I, I I don't think we still are, you know, trying to build on what Larry kind of alluded to just, just a moment ago. And so, you know, I've I'm, 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 I'm got a bit of mixed emotions, you know, particularly after seeing what John sent out just before the meeting. And maybe, maybe we should just take a, a real good look at that and 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 could it be, I'll just pose the question, could it be that the reason we're getting people people who spend less money here is because we're just throwing a net too wide, maybe? I, I, you know, I, you know what I'm saying, I, uh, and and instead of focusing on, you know, a, a particular population, we're just throwing this net out there, and we're grabbing guppies instead of tuna. Um, I, I, you know, I've been sick for a couple of days, so if I if I use wrong analogies, please forgive me. But I, I hope I'm getting my my point across. That you know. We're getting more people, but there's many less. So what people are we getting here and why? And um, are, are, are we again throwing out too big a net and 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 not being uh, just more selective and, and more intelligent about our process? Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I'm going to, I see Patrick's have his hand raised and, and tell me your name, sorry. Okay, Carrie, hold on one second. So I'm going to make a comment first, then Patrick, then Carrie, then Roger, uh, and then Todd. Okay, hold, hold on, sorry. Patrick, Carrie, Roger. You really got him started, Joe. Yeah. Uh, we're going to manage the time, Joe. This is extremely important. So I have my eye towards that. Thank you. Um, I'm just going to share. Uh, a quick the, the the data that I sent to a few of you. Sorry, Marion. Before I forget, Marion made a comment that she is a parent from ascending town with respect to school. She's happy to help with understanding that sort of communication. Yeah, I just want to share two two. So we finally have been able to gather. And, and I'm sorry, but it was at three o'clock today is when this data was crunched. Um, two sets of data. One is the revenue that the EDC collects, which, which from which we can calculate the sales in Woodstock of rooms, uh, meals, and alcohol, which is not all of the spending for tourism, but is, I think, highly correlated with the total spending for tourism. And we also can count the number of people who come to the visitor center. Um, that's not all of the people who come to Woodstock, but I think it's highly correlated with people who come to Woodstock. So we can look at the relationship between how many people come to the Welcome Center and how much revenue Woodstock generates in those areas and see how they relate and come to, I think, some reasonably good conclusions about what's happening without knowing what the total is. 
So this shows the Welcome Center visitors on a calendar basis. It grew at about 6% a year from 2017 to 2022, from 39,500 39, to 53,500. It's about 6% a year. I think it's a little bit faster than the economy grew during those years. Um, so we did reasonably well. In 2023, in the last 12 months, it grew by 50%. And Beth, our number was 60, but it, it, the numbers were quite wrong. This is more accurate. So, uh, and, in, and it's not more concentrated. It's about 40 to 45% come in September and October and 55% the rest of the year. And that's, there's not really a trend on that right hand line just for those that are interested. But then let's, and, and by the way, this is calendar year. So January to December, we don't have data for the last quarter of 2023. We get our revenue for, the, for October through December in mid-February. So we only have data up through the end of September. So we're looking at on the next page at EDC years which are October 1 through September 30th. That's when we get our revenue. And that's when the rev that, so that's the revenue we're counting. And so here are the welcome center visitors in those 12 month periods. You can see the trend is exactly the same. The numbers are a little bit different because this year's wassail was bigger than last year's wassail. So we're talking about a 30% increase between 2022, which is October 21 to September 22 and 2023, which is October 22 to December to September 23. And we're looking at EDC revenue and we're converting that to the option sales. We get seven tenths of 1% of every dollar spent on meals, rooms, and alcohol. 30, 33 tenths of 1% goes to the state. And so you can see that at a period in time, just in this last year, when revenue, when, when visitors went up by 30%, the revenue went down by 1.6 million. Now, again, that's not a total, but that trend or that relationship, I think is, is pretty close. And so when you just divide those, you, another way of saying that is, there's a couple of ways you can say that is, the extra 15,000 people didn't add anything to our spending. It didn't benefit anybody. The merchants didn't get any more out of it. Merchants meaning the lodging and so forth. They didn't get anything out of it. Um, the residents, had more traffic and didn't get anything out of it. And we spent a lot of money to get it. I mean, the other thing you can say is that our marketing programs look like they're working, which in my view is, it looks like they're working, but they're working for the wrong thing. Or, or it's not the wrong, I don't mean that there was a mistake made, but they're working in a way that isn't getting us what we want. And I think that the goals that we are changing to, if we can achieve them, will change this. And to Joe's point, may, maybe the number of visitors go down to, to, to 50,000 or 40,000, but the number of new homes built goes up and the spending stays the same or goes up if we're targeting, as you say, Joe, a narrower group. So right. I think what this supports to me is, uh, is that our goals needed to change. I think we've done a good job at getting closer and closer to a very new set of goals. And I think there's a financial imperative to change the goals and we'll have to decide what kind of platform we wanna to use to pursue those goals. But given this, I would like to use a good platform because I think we John, need to do something. John, I think there's some factors that you're, that you're not counting for in this. One is the number of rooms has gone down dramatically because we've lost some B&B. &B. So I think that changes the, the number. Uh, fairly dramatically because this is really just measuring uh rooms and and meals and meals means restaurants and and that type of thing so i don't think this is a fair comparison to make that determination of where the spending is happening uh because it's a very sliver of what's out there totally so agree. I, totally agree yeah well let me let me just point out mathematically for this trend for for the title for the title of the chart to dramatically change, which would be, the, the other title would be uh, volume of people is up 30% and spending is up 30%. For that to be the title, a whole lot of data would have had to change. A huge change would have had to happen. So I'm not suggesting that we should invest in these percentages precisely. But the question we should ask, and we can disagree about it, we don't have to spend a lot of time, is what is the trend that the financial impact of the growth muted 
it, was that conclusion right or not? I think, they, anyway, that, that's what it is. So, so let me just go around. So Patrick, was that your point or did you want to make another no, point? No, no, no. That point came up from you, you with your chart. I, I just we wanted are, to say- I just We're also to... maxed out with uh, restaurants. The people, they can't get into restaurants. So the fact right, that it's- nowhere to eat. That it's flat is, is yeah. Quite, quite understandable. Yeah, I think it's really important. We lost on. a lot of short-term housing. We lost the rare side oh. in. We lost a lot of places. Yeah. Hold on a second, Patrick. I, I um, think it's very important we don't lose sight of those numbers. Joe, hold on. Forward. I'll, Todd and, and Joe, I'll give you a chance. So, but let's just okay. go one. One. Everyone has raised their hand. We'll give you a chance to make some quick comments, okay. and then we'll move. So, it's Patrick. Okay. My, my my point. I just wanted to point out that. Uh, the platform uh, we are looking for when, when we're doing our ads, we're looking for the best uh, possible visitors. Uh, and that can be completely uh, adjusted. We can raise that level uh, to, to Joe's point. We can raise that level. Uh, we're not throwing out a big net. We're throwing out a very finite net, but we can, we can refine, refine that net even further uh, with the platform. It's a matter of, just analyzing the data. Uh, all of the things that we do, we look for the best responding ads, but we're also going for a certain demographic. So uh, all that can be adjusted uh, in any of the ways that we use the platform. It's it's really a, a communications tool that lets us fine tune it. Okay, thank that's, you. That's... All right, sorry, thank you, Carrie. Hi, everybody. Uh, Carrie Moynt from the Yankee Bookshop. Uh, I don't know how often you actually get to hear from merchants, so I thought I would speak up for a second. Um, I'll be brief. I think the marketing is beautiful. I think you guys are doing a great job. Um, I don't know, you know, as far as budgets go, which direction I feel like we should go at this point. Um, I think the new goals sound great. Um, my concern comes from, you know, this past year, I can say we had three different job applicants, great people who we really wanted to hire and none of them could find housing. They were all trying to move here from out of state. Yeah. They didn't know the area. They couldn't find anybody. They, they couldn't even find a room to live in. So there are people that want to move here and want to live here. And I know that we have a housing group that's working on stuff already. Um, you know, from, from our perspective in needing to have employees in order to serve the people that come here as visitors as and and our community members the people that are here like we need employees to keep up with everybody um and it's really hard to do that um i can also tell you we have had a lot of growth since the pandemic so the marketing that you're doing to get people here is definitely working we're seeing a huge amount of traffic in the shop um they are spending more than they did in the past um, so I can say that from from our business to help with some of the, you know, the data for spending and things like that. Um, but yeah, just thought it'd be good to lend a voice. Okay, thank you, Karen. Thank you. Uh, Roger, and then Todd, Deb, and Joe. And Jennifer. Oh, Jennifer, okay. And then, but that's that's it. And please, let's, I'm sorry, but let's kind of make the comments quick. I won't. Hey, um, why not? This is obviously a very impressive amount of work. The question is, is are we spending more than we should be spending? And to my mind, spending almost probably more than a third of the EDC's budget on continuing with this marketing program is highly dubious. Um, I'm not saying that it hasn't been effective. Um, you know, it's very hard to measure metrics. You know, you got a billion impressions or whatever else, and that means that people are interested in what you're doing, which is great. We don't know how much that rolls over except for some of the proxy measurements that John's talking about. I think it's truly time if you're gonna start marketing to a different segment of people trying to do different things to get back to the fundamental tools of marketing. I'm not saying that email doesn't have a, a place. I'm not saying that some of these advertising things don't have a place, but running what's in many ways a loyalty program I don't think is going to help with the changing goals particularly. And I think there needs to be, whether it's this year or next year, there needs to be a long-term plan to start spending less money 
and to start working on the fundamentals like the website. The website as it is does not support the goals that you've got in mind. It just simply does not. It doesn't support SEO. It doesn't support, it's also ridiculously expensive to spend $600 a month on technical maintenance of a website. So I think that we need to take our money and put it in places where it can have a significant impact like, like housing which is not to say that there shouldn't be marketing going on and that there shouldn't be a significant marketing program, but looking at your plan B, I don't know what that person is doing for half their time. That's not enough work for a half-time person and from what I can see. Um, so I would say start now and start looking at how you can develop the fundamentals of a marketing program that is truly looking at and communicating to diverse audiences. Thanks. Uh, excuse me. Um, so I, first of all, I don't want to feel rushed. I think that's not fair. So I'm going to try to go fast, but okay. that's going to be yes. All right. Um, if we can't get to the housing, it has to be punted. Like this is what we, or we're going to stay here on whatever it is. But I don't think we should be rushed on this. We've been working okay. on it for months and months and months and months. Fair enough. My look, I argued with Joe and Mike on behalf of this plan three years ago, I think it was. And I I didn't understand what Joe was saying. And by the way, I struggle because I, I fully think this is a badass program and runs so well. And it's probably a lot of value. I feel like it probably is. So for Roger's points, it's not my business, but it feels good to me and it doesn't feel like a waste of money. But when we have limited resources and there's all these other things going on this year and next year, I struggle with, and this goes back to something I brought up before, I personally struggle with, we talked about funding this as an infrastructure bill that would allow us to build a platform that wouldn't always have to be what it was. And that's not how it turned out in that way. And that doesn't mean we... It is what it is what it is, right? It's it's it some people might think it's the most valuable and inexpensive tool, and other people may think it costs 99.99% too much, like you know. So I don't I don't I don't know how we can decide with this chart, John. It's great, but you don't even have like of course you could, I could say a million things and you're 10 times smarter than me, but inflation alone isn't reflected in this, right? Like when I went and spent 20 grand at Focus Gallery, it's not in there, and there could be a thousand of me, there could be zero. Like, so it's it's a complicated issue because all of this is. So I'm struggling with how we can afford to pay for this when there's no place for people to live here. That's that's just my struggle. And I don't know how to quantify it any other way. I like the marketing program. Well, everything everyone's saying is great. There's no place for people to live. That's, sorry, I don't have more in-depth knowledge in this, but that's where I'm at. All right, thank you. Um... Deb, then Joe, then Jennifer. Did I fix it? Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, Deb. <laughs> okay. Um, first of all, I just thank you. Um, thank you for putting this together so precisely and to be able to really see firsthand like what you did, you know, and the results of it hand in hand was really incredibly helpful. Um, the thing that I want to bring up right now is, John, that chart that you were just talking about, and this kind of goes to Todd's point, but I want to take it a step farther, which is that what it's showing is a core, in my mind, there's a lot of uh, data that's missing from it. You know, that you have, you can, you can paint your picture as you want it. But to me, what it speaks of is uh, a degradation of the experience that people are ha having when they get here that what happens is it's not just that there's no place to eat for that huge amount of 49% raise of amount of people, but then there's also the people that come in that would have found a place to eat, but are so frustrated by the numbers and the lack of food that they then move on, right? Um, so I think that's where that, that gap comes from, is that people are not having the same experience because there are too many people that are coming in and too many people that are coming in, perhaps, as you were saying, the wrong people that are not spending time to understand the community and get to know it. Um, so again, I, I'm impressed with this program. I think I don't see how, for me, 
I can decide for me, I don't even know how to vote between plan A and plan B yet. Um, I feel like there's still missing pieces of it. Um, but I also really think that we we should look at some of of, of the problems um, like the busing and, and things that are bringing in, th you know, things are changed since the pandemic. People are driving through more. There are going to be things that are happening that have nothing to do with the marketing. It's just society right now. But I think um, our money being spent in ways to fix the problems of the experience that people are having and the ability to um, serve the people who are coming through is a really is where my mind goes to at this moment. Um, and by the way, that's not saying not marketing. It's just saying that I think that speaks to the experience and the people coming in, coming through. I'd like to come up with some ideas about how to make that less attractive for people to come through just to pee where there's no place to pee. Okay. Not that Todd's bathroom proposal is, is a bad one. Joe and then Jennifer, and we'll move on. Oh, Joe. Yeah, thank you. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm very impressed, favorably impressed with the professionalism of the work that was done uh, and the presentation you just made, I, I, I just absolutely fantastic. But getting back to, I think, a point that a lot of us, and I think even Deb just made some point of the same point. The experience people have when they come here. I think that's such an important phrase. Thank you, Deb. Um, uh, I've always felt that that's where the focus should have been right from the beginning. The people who come here, when they leave, was it a great experience? <laughs> and somehow I think we lost sight of that. And the data that John just displayed, I think supports that. I really do. Um, so we can't lose sight of that data. I think that's so important. And building on that is so important. And it's going to go back to fundamentals of making, first, making sure there's enough chairs for people to sit when you invite them to dinner. And that there's enough food to feed everybody and that they, the experience they have while they are here is favorable. And that data, that data I think, displays exactly that. Thank you. Jennifer, thank you, Jennifer. Um, thank you. I I just was going to make a point with the um, spend. Um, the inn was closed for two weeks in July. And so I think that had a lot of skew to that because we had three big weddings. That's food and beverage revenue right there and lodging. So I think that if we could kind of like maybe work with you on that and say, okay, if this was filled, yeah. what would what would have happened? Would we have been even? Right. Um, and I won't go into the marketing thing because it was a very healthy discussion and I'm looking forward to working with the marketing committee and Greta and uh, our next sure. steps. Okay, fantastic. Maybe defining A and B a little bit more for yeah. everyone. Good. I would just say that I think this was a great, this was exactly what we needed to do, which is to have half the discussion tonight so that we can have the other half of the discussion next month. And I think we were on all of the issues that were important on both perspectives and so forth. So I think it was extremely productive. So thank you. I agree with the prep, the preparation was excellent and all the comments and so forth. So thank, thank you. you for that. Um, I, we're gonna need to be staying late. We won't need to be staying too late, but we have another big uh, lot of content to talk about, maybe less controversial, but a lot of content on housing. And it's a great, the comments about housing near the end of this discussion is a perfect setup for the next, um, the next agenda, which is a term proposal from the housing. And Jill, I think if you want to ask to share, you, you need to do that. You need to give me permission. Oh, I need to give permission. Sorry, I do that first, right? Okay, go ahead. Did you go to a slideshow? Yeah. 
hit the Is that okay? Not sure. We'll see. Okay. So, hi, I'm Jill Davis. I'm um, a member of the EDC Housing Working Group. Trina is on the screen. Trina is the housing advisor, and Lisa Lawler is also here. She's a member of the group. And we're going to give you um, a 12 page presentation that will hopefully get to a lot of discussion. So, probably best again if we follow Greta's example and get through the presentation and then have lots of discussion at the end. Great. Not working. Okay. To advance it, maybe just try clicking on the left. So I'm trying to do a screen share. Oh, oh there you something go. happens. Doesn't it do it? I think maybe just zoom out. Is that possible? Just pro. No, not quite. <laughs> Yeah, I had to have John run it. So. Try patting your head and rubbing your feet. Okay, try again. We won't do the bill thing that we're going to do. Okay. So the good news <laughs> is that we are achieving our objective. We've been funded for about 18 months. And in that time, we've created six homes right now and nine in progress that will be completed in 2024-25. So we're doing what the grants were designed for. We're making it, we're making more homes available very specifically for people working in Woodstock. And we're doing that by working with property owners and micro developers to create long, I'm sorry, we're making it more attractive for people to create long-term rental homes. So we're trying to move people who might see an opportunity with short-term rentals into long-term rentals. So far, we've got these 15 units. So we've got four homes rented that were not previously rented. So they weren't on the market. They came on the market, we caught them. We've got two new ADUs that are completed and rented. And we've got nine apartments in the process of being constructed for completion in 24, 25. So what we want to do in 24 is concentrate on making the programs more effective. We want to make 32 more homes available now for local workers. And I use the word now is very important and we'll be using that through the presentation because we're working against the constraints posed by the water permit limitations who are halting new home building. So right now you can't build a, a home because you can't get a water permit. So we have a, a situation maybe for 12 months until that situation is resolved where we might need to take some different action. So we're going to propose that. Um, and then with the success under our belt, we want to start investigating what it will take to support larger developments because we're working on ones, twos, fours, and we need to work on some bigger numbers and we want to work out what we can provide that would be attractive to um, people who will do those kind of buildings but we need to be very cautious that as soon as you get into developing 10, 20, 30 units, you're talking about planning that takes a couple of years. So we're talking, so that's our later plan. So we want to talk about now and later. And just to be clear, the bigger things aren't included in the 32. The 32 are still the one, two, four yeah. model. The things that we could think we can achieve in the next couple of years. And then we can build our future as well with future plans. Okay, so here's what we want to commit to, 32 units. We think it will take 354,000 to do that. And what we're doing is detailing the program, potential enhancements to the programs we've already got, the costs and the potential number of units in the next pages. And that's a huge number, 354,000, that's your whole budget. So what we want to think about is how we can commit to those kind of numbers now and through the year and kind of take a menu approach and think about the programs. Yes, we're comfortable with this now. We should start this now. We've got enough in the kitty. We can keep going. Let's talk about that later in the year. But it's $350,000. So we can take all your budget if you want us to. What we have to do before the end of February is commit 40000 to maintain the housing advisor. None of this happens without her. Um, Volunteers can do so much, but not everything. Then in February and March, we should be choosing which programs to invest in now, getting things started and ramped up. 
and then keep the discussion going in April or later and choose the next programs we can invest in. So Trina's going to talk about this one a little bit. Yes. Hi, everyone. So uh, this is so awesome. Um, I love this screen here. So it these are real examples, uh, real people, and real photos of uh, two success stories in our program. Um, we are using these for full case studies and that are at the end of this document that you're looking at. You can peruse those and get some detail, but just kind of putting them into this perspective has helped a lot for people to understand that some of the cost to build these things can be within their reach, especially with the help of the state incentives. So the left side is a picture of uh, a project. It was a uh, studio, uh, studio apartment in the rear of a garage that was um, enlarged uh, a bit to include a, a kitchen. Um, in the background, you can see um, that's the tenant up top and just the landlord and the tenant having a good time outside their new place. Um, the tenant is actually a pastry chef. So local worker and uh, just really excited to, to be living in there and have this beautiful new space. And then the other project, the second project, was a two car garage with, it's on the right hand side and a apartment on top, brand new. Uh, both of these uh, units were uh, done highly efficient. So because of the efficiency they were able to do, not only were they, uh, did they receive the EDC grant um, and property owners live on site, they were able to get the state uh, 50,000 each for these projects, but they were also to, able to get the healthy home initiative from the state. So you can see doing a modification of existing space, um, pretty much 20,000, 19,000 out of pocket for that project. Um, the property is gonna be rented for five years um, at a low monthly rent that's very affordable for some of the folks that are actually doing the work here in Woodstock. So that's awesome. And then the other example showing the garage unit, <clears throat> That out of pocket is 115,000 approximately. We're waiting on some final numbers on that, but that includes our grant and the state grants. So again, we have we've got the full case study at the end. You guys can look at some of the other details there. Go on to the next slide. Okay. Sorry, so let's. Trina, could you just just uh, could you just go like back to, to the other side for one second? In yeah. one minute, could you just explain the role that the housing advisor plays in? Because we only gave each of these ten thousand dollars. You were not hands off on the other seventy two thousand and sixty five thousand. Could you just briefly explain the support that you provide? beyond the dollars that enabled them or helped them to get that grant money? Just explain your role in that. Because otherwise the assumption is, is that we were only contributing at the margins and other people made this happen. Other people did help make it happen, but can you just explain that? Uh, right, right. So I was very hands-on uh, with the bar, well, you know, both of them actually. So, you know, telling not only talking about our own programs with the EDC and how those work, but also working with and providing information on the state programs, the VHIP, uh, Paul Mortarano, and getting these folks in touch with him and encouraging them to um, do those programs. I can say that the Burns, at one point, they pulled out and weren't going to move forward with the program, but we had some discussions, um, pulled in um, some information as far as what they potentially could receive from the state to make this happen. And, and help them with some of their questions. Um, and anytime you're doing a modification of existing space project, there was a lot of stress. They were their own general contractor. So um, actually they weren't their general contractor, but it was the first time doing uh, this type of work. And you know they had some big things to do, uh, getting their septic uh, updated and things like that. So, I mean, I, I received texts from Sean Burns. I talked to him on the phone, you know, we we talk about things and the headaches you're going to incur when you do these types of projects and talking them off the ledge, you know, so there was a lot of conversations and just helping him understand, you know, some of the things he was going through were, were normal for these types of projects. Uh, taking a step back, 
um, and working with them to provide resources and information they need. So thank you. Thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. So uh, the two ADUs we just saw are the ones that are completed and rented out. And just a reminder on those, it was a $10,000 incentive from the EDC. And for our program, they have to rent it for three years. Uh, the beauty of when we can work these in with the state is that the state program is for five years. So we'll basically, they'll be uh, at okay. those... <laughs> <laughs> they'll be at the that same rate for five years, which is good because not only does it meet our objectives and what we're trying to do, which is rent to a local worker, but uh, by using the state funds as well, uh, they'll be participating in our program, even though we don't fund them anymore for uh, a couple extra years, if that makes sense. Yeah. So basically, um, I'm not going to get into all the program description. I think you guys know, but basically, you know, um, $10,000 sent up to, for a local worker uh, has to work here for three years. And by work here, it's our qualified work area. It was uh, Woodstock uh, and some of the surrounding towns. That's for the work only. But the program itself is in Woodstock only. So the program results we just saw. Um, we also have two other units that are in process, uh, progress right now. Um, I'm thinking that those... Um, they're both one bedrooms and they will probably be done sometime by the end of summer. So when you break that out, it, it comes because you've got it for three years that the EDC, it comes to about $3,300 a year is the cost of those units from the EDC. So some of the issues we've noticed is just the limitation of the Woodstock boundary. I get a lot of calls from people um, in Pomfret or Barnard or Bridgewater. They're interested, but, you know, it's beyond our boundary. Um, so something that we'd like to uh, maybe consider expanding, especially with the water, some of the electricity capacity issues that we have. That's one way that we can work around that in the interim of the town getting those things addressed. Um, <clears throat> and it's not an issue, but the state programs do help to, uh, the cost alone, I guess, is the issue. But the state's program helped to offset that even more when used in conjunction with our programs. Uh, property taxes are still a concern for many folks on whether or not they want to build an ADU and the impact that's going to have on, on their taxes. Um, a lot of folks just need help with the state rules and the permit process. Um, you know, John, you mentioned what do I do. One, we've had an issue recently with one of the ADUs and the state permit process. So I literally went over to her house and we sat there and we filled out the application together. So, you know, I'm I'm happy to help wherever the folks need it. And in that case, she doesn't have a general contractor, so she's acting as a general contractor. So <clears throat> I'm happy to help wherever it, uh, it's needed, just to get the projects over the finish line. So, But there are a couple of things we want to propose as enhancements to the programs. Uh, one is to extend the program beyond the Woodstock properties. And we've talked about doing this, and I think the select board's mentioned it a couple times, someone on the select board. But basically the idea of instead of doing just the Woodstock boundary, um, using some type of a, a radius approach, maybe 15 miles from town hall, period, boom, put it on a map. Um, that might allow for some of the other surrounding towns where people most likely would live uh, uh, and work in Woodstock um, without getting to that outer borders of these same communities that I think was a concern before. So that's something we'd like to consider, um, have you consider for an enhancement to the program. Uh, the other is, is, is 10,000 enough or do we need to increase it to 15? Do we need to allow some additional funds for some of the things that people are doing uh, the, with the water capacity issues or increase in property taxes? Just in, increase the incentive, especially in light of some of the incentives you see from the state. But, you know, it's something we'd like to have you consider. Um, we still want to keep working with the uh, local governments and uh, on zoning changes and getting those out. I'd be hopeful that once Bauer gets the uh, village zoning changes posted or they're out there, that that might incent some folks to build an ADU um, and also having the case studies could help people visualize what they could actually do where that didn't exist before. Um, next slide.
Then we've got the multi-unit. Um, that program is pretty much the same as the ADU, except it was for creating uh, duplexes, triplexes, or four-unit four dwellings. And same thing, working for three years, uh, local worker, um, same lease amounts. Everything's the same. Um, we have two units that are in progress that are going to bring us five units um, or two uh, properties that have signed up that will bring us five units. Um, some of those are in construction right now and the others are planned for later this year going into 2025. Um, the cost of those programs for those five units is uh, 70000 um, Again, that's 10000 per unit, which works out over the course of the three year period, the 3,300. So some of the issues again that we're hearing about is our inquiries that we get beyond the Woodstock border. And when I say beyond the, I mean, I'll get calls from somebody who's just over the border and it's like, oh man, I wish I could help you, but I can't, you know, um, it just, it's a little limiting. So um, something that we'd like to consider again is the radius idea um, so that we could get those properties, not only in our program, but for our local workers. Um, <clears throat> cost is still a concern, finding tenants, same things as the ADU pretty much. Um, but so the enhancements, we'd like to look at the uh, coverage area for our programs and also increase that incentive from 10 to 15,000 and then remove the cap, removing the cap of four units. We had that on there initially because that was a pilot program, but we feel like it's been successful just in the first year as far as those that have been committed to it. So we thought if we remove that cap of four units, it would move us towards supporting larger development, whether it's, you know, 10 units, 15, whatever the case may be. One of our uh, initiatives is to look at what we can do for developers. Um, that type of thing. But first things first, you know, if somebody came in and wanted to build 10 units, we could use all of the multi-unit housing um, budget and in one committed grant. So just taking that cap off of there. Okay, next slide, please. I'll do this one. Thank so, you. So we want to explore how to support larger development projects. Once development projects get beyond that four, the kind of thing that you can take on as your own project manager, that's one set of, we believe that's one way to approach it. And then when you get to larger people, you're dealing with much different finances, raising money beforehand. And we want to learn much more about all of that to see how we can explore it and where we can make the difference. So we want to ask questions like, are the incentives meaningful for a larger development? So say we gave a $300,000 grant, which is 20 times 15,000, would that make any difference? When would you have to give that grant so that that, or that um, company or a group of people can go and ask for more money? We, we don't know enough about it, so we need to learn. But so our intention for this year is to create some alternative mm -hmm. ideas to start working with some potential developers, really understand that and understand where you can put some money in to make a difference. And I'll talk about the rental incentive program. So, so far we've got four houses that are rented to Woodstock workers. We have a program that incents property, own, incent property owners to convert a unit that's currently a short-term rental or an unused property into a long-term rental and we pay them to do that and we've got these four units that are rented for two years and we give them a larger incentive if the property owner is prepared to do that so those incentives have cost us 28,600 and we've got um, houses of different so the total cost of that program is 28,600 and the average cost per home is 3,600 one of the issues we have is that we don't actually have any short-term rental programs in the pro properties in the program. The way that we set our incentives didn't work and we haven't done enough marketing to do that. Um, we also are concerned that the lease requirements are too long. 
So because we have that group of people in drive time come from Boston and New York, we're not always like the other markets that we look at and, and want to copy, where people are flying in and perhaps coming for a longer period rather than frequent weekends. So we haven't succeeded in that one. So what we'd like to do is to make some enhancements to this program to make it work better. And this probably is the program that we're saying can keep working even if there are no more water permits given out this year because we're talking about taking existing properties and switching it to long-term rentals. So we want to extend the current program that we have to three years for each incentive. And we want to extend the program to include properties close to Woodstock. For those people, we can say you must rent to a Woodstock worker, but we, we want to acknowledge that Woodstock workers don't live in Woodstock. Many of them do, but so many of them live in Heartland, Bridgewater, and all of our communities mm -hmm. around us. So let's start incentivizing them too, because they are providing Woodstock workers a home. Um, and then we want to make a major change to, get, to really bring in some more short-term rental owners and second homeowners. And we want to look at in, increasing incentives, increasing the marketing, and we want to consider using an outside company to run this program. And that's what I want to talk to you, to you about next. So there are other markets that have succeeded in converting short-term rentals into long-term rentals. And it's a very simple program. You pay. Um, so we've been work talking with a company who does this. And the, rec it, it, the recommendation is you need to be putting up $5,000 per person housed to convert the short-term rentals into long-term rentals. So you're not really asking short-term rental people to take a, a hit. Maybe you are asking them to take a short hit, a small hit, but you're paying them and saying, we really want your house. Please rent it to long to rent it to local workers and we'll pay you. So here's the program that has been proposed. The company is called Placemates. And we want to put a program in that will really throw everything at it and convert 10, bring in 10 units for 2024. So Placemates is a, um, a company who runs programs in seven tourist towns in California and, and now Nantucket on the East Coast. They provide lots of services. They provide lots of the services that Trina does. So they qualify the property owners, they match the tenants and the landlords, they market the program, they carry out all the landlord and tenant details, and they carry out the compliance checks, things that Trina does right now, but they, they can do those. And they get results. I think that's the, probably the most important thing. So the two towns that we've been looking, that they have numbers for, are seven to 10 times bigger than us. In Truckee, they've converted 126 <laughs> units. So that's 10 times bigger than us. So it is possible, 10, we're 10 times smaller. So we could get the, our 10% of that. And then in Summit County, which is where Breckenridge is, they've converted 114 units. An interesting statistic that they have is they give the incentives for the first year, but they're seeing 60 to 70% of properties renew as long-term rentals without giving any extra incentives. So it's not just a flash in the pan. So they wrote us a proposal that we want to share with you to say, what is this going to, what would it take to make this work in Woodstock? So the first thing is much higher incentives. And they have um, they do their incentives on a, a per person basis. We've been doing them on a per bedroom basis. They're much higher. So for example, a two bedroomed house, which has got two or three people in, we had an incentive of 3,500. They talk about an incentive of 8,000. Well, that, that's what they'd recommend for us. They'd recommend doing much more promotion so postcard mailings, newspaper, magazine advertising, their website. Um, so spending money against that. In, they'd also charge us an admin fee. So we'd need a budget of 93,500 to convert 10 units for 18 people. The admin and marketing is a setup fee of 7,500. And they really need a 12 month commitment to come in and do this. And you would want to do that for that kind of setup money too. Once you're started, once you're into all of that, you've got a monthly fee of 2000 a month to pay for all the work they're doing and the promotion money. And then you've got 60,000 for the housing grants. 
So it sounds like a lot of money, but it works. It has worked in other markets. And um, if we want 10 more units quickly, this is the way to do it. Okay, uh, one, Trina, you do this one. Quickly, so we have time for discussion. Yep, so uh, home share, um, we haven't had any results from the incentive that we put out there, which was something that Burlington started. However, we've got some good news with home share. Um, you know, you've seen the recent things that uh, Thompson Center's partnered with the home share Vermont. So um, the good news is I think they're gonna get more traction as far as marketing and some things going on that are gonna address some of the issues that have been, you know, seniors only or lack of awareness. But one thing that we would like to do um, is to increase the incentive. Uh, so this is either going to work or it's not to incent someone to rent a bedroom from somebody or a space from somebody. Um, so uh, before we were offering <clears throat> one thousand uh, dollars a year, we'd like to increase that to be uh, two hundred dollars a month. So it would be twelve hundred dollars per six month period. So two hundred dollars, and after every six months, you would be paid. Um, and increase it and see if a larger amount of money would offset that and get some interest. Um, and if it doesn't, it sounds like Thompson Center has a lot of support now with the Home Share Vermont and decided this is a program we want to continue doing through the EDC. Um, okay. I believe okay. that's it. The next slide. Okay. Okay. So I just detailed on this slide the work that uh, Trina does. I think you perhaps heard about it in a better way with what she's doing to support the ADUs. But what Trina's doing is doing all of the program administration and believe you me, running a program with public money is a lot of work. Um, she manages the EDC housing working group. She works on the program design and enhancement and she's there for the landlords, tenants and the builders. So she's making this program work. Okay, so here's the menu page. John, is it possible to move the cursor to make this bigger? Uh, yeah, um, Greta has to do that. On this screen, you mean, yeah. Do you want me to... It's not going to get much bigger. Just yeah, move it. Slide that right over. There you go. Yeah, oh, okay, that is bigger. And, and maybe... <laughs> All right, so here's the menu page. If we were to do everything that we wanted to do, it would come to 354000 to continue and then enhance our programs. And that we believe that can get us 32 units. We also know how much of your budget that is. So we'd love to take a menu approach. So on the left side, you've got the different programs in the top, ADU workforce, multi-unit, rental incentive, and home share. And then underneath that line, you've got the our expenses that probably need to happen anyway of the housing advisor. So we're asking for 40,000 for the housing advisor. And you've got expenses for the rental incentive if we do that one. And then we do have other expenses, but we've still got enough money in the kitty that we can keep going on that. So if you look at the, the column that says request, the 2024 request, those are the numbers that we want to put against each program. And those are the number of units that we think each of those programs can achieve. So ADU Workforce is a program we want to continue. We want to increase the incentive. We want to ask for 55,000 to keep that going. We're going to keep it going anyway, because we've still got 20,000 left um, in, in the budget that we haven't spent this year. The multi-unit, we want to ask for 170,000. That's for 12 units. That's one again that will keep going. We can improve the program. We haven't, we've only got 10,000 left in that budget, but we can keep talking to people and come to you when we've got the proposal and then can kind of be, be backwards. If you don't want to commit it now, maybe we can commit it, commit it later if bigger revenue comes in. Um, the rental incentive one, we need money for grants and we need money for expenses. And we'd like to start that now. We'd like to get that going. It's going to take us a bit of time to set it up. So we'd like to be asking for 87,000 to get that going. We need that commitment in one go. Just to be clear, that 87, the, the cost of the program is about 93. You've got six in the bank. Yeah. You're asking to fill up the 93 so we can make the 12 month yes. commitment to the company as yeah. a pilot. And then get going. Yep. Yeah. 
And then right. the home the home share one, we want another two thousand. We've got money in the budget, so we'll do that. We'll do it anyway. We might come to you if it takes off. We'll come and ask for another couple of thousand to help keep it going. I don't think that would be our top priority. What we would ask you for approval for as soon as possible is to maintain Trina's contract. Um, that's the forty thousand there. Okay. Just a quick comment for a process comment, and then it's open up for discussion. I made, we've let one EDC member go, and I've told people we're not going to vote on anything tonight, knowing that we can vote on the housing advisor next month. The funding runs out at the end of February, and we have to, we'll be voting on the communications program presumably next month as well. So this also, like the, uh, the first presentation we saw, is a kind of an, a briefing in advance in detail about what it is that's coming down the pike. But um, we do need to, as we say, there's still $50,000 of incentive money available roughly, but we do need to have to approve the housing advisor if we want to have any, really, if we want to have any housing work done. Yeah. Okay, any comments or questions from, let me just check with EDC members first and then Susie, anything from EDC folks? Todd, Joe, are you relaxing or raising your hand? Jill, I've got a question for you. Oh, um, I was, oh sorry. Well, uh, I'd call him Todd for Todd first, and then I, sorry, oh. Oh, Okay, so um, this is, of course, incredibly well done. I can personally say, for anyone that cares to listen, that um, Trina is such an asset um, to this town. I just that it, it's just she's just amazing, so smart, and so compassionate. And I just I just can't thank you enough, Trina, for your work. You just you just oh, thank you. And really just talented to shit. You're amazing. <laughs> I appreciate um, that. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's you, you're welcome, but thank you. Um, I I I only just have a because I'm I'm the dumbest member of the EC. Can you just circle on the computer screen where what you're asking for as the minimum, where that 90,000 is? I couldn't add it up and figure it out. So Trina's is 40, then is there 50 Trina's other 40 here? No, no, yeah. no. The, the 90,000 isn't that isn't doesn't include the 40. Right. Sorry. Right. You're talking about the rental and center program. Yeah. So then it's 120. Want to, so we want to hand that off. To, That's to make the, the to make the rental incentive program, we need this 53600 here, and then this 33400. I got it. And then Trina. So two. And then seven. Trina. Okay. That's all. That's my only question. Great. Yeah. Great. That's yeah. 130 thousand. Is what we put as our first priority. I think. Right. Mine. Okay. Thank I you. think it's good to know, uh, Jill, uh, and. The, that or everyone on the call that the payment cycle is typically spread over three years. And if you flip down to that next slide, Jill, it kind of shows the money that we ask for to now is to be committed for these grants and the work that needs to be done, but it's typically paid out over a three to four year period. For example, if you look at the grant from 2022-23, that money uh, started off, we were, it was committed in 2022. We paid some out in 2023, and then we're going to pay some more out this year. So that's typically our the cycle we're seeing, which is based off ramp up time once they sign the agreement, um, the two year uh, rental term, and uh, you know two years to build, which we've cut that down to one year in some cases. But just to give you an idea, so this kind of gives you a forecast of how those funds would be broken out over the next several years. Okay, that's all. Uh, Michael had his question answered. Susie, if you can come up to the podium, and then Deb Green has her hand. So in terms of expanding it to the local towns, I think it should be expanded to anybody who sends it. So the school system is like more than Woodstock, right? It's Bridgewater, it's Killington, it's these things. Anywhere where we send kids to school, uh, to, to send you know, um, should be, I think, should be included because the more you increase, you know, if you build someone, if somebody in, in uh, Bridgewater, you know, builds an ADU and a family comes there, that's more money for us. It's more kids in the school. It's about twenty five thousand per child. Just if anyone wants to know, it's a very interesting concept of an employee slash school child program. Um, yeah, I'm going to add you to the list, Roger. That's but really I, smart, Susan. Um, Cooks, there was another Deb Green and then Roger. Was that Susie who brought that up? Yeah, yeah. that was great. Okay, thanks. Um, 
as always, really beautiful. Um, Trina, can you go back one slide? Um, yep. Uh, is that the one I want? I don't know. Maybe it's the one before. I don't know. It had numbers on it. Let me see. Oh, this one? Oh, the air. Nope. Back farther, like where the, here. Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. It had, where the asking is. Anyway, the, the, oh. point, the point I'm trying to get to is not just about how it's allocated. I mean, when it's allocated, but, um, and it goes out, you know, committed versus allocation. Um, how much, how much have you spent so far? Like not what, not, not what's been um, committed, but how much has gone out the EDC door so far? So if, you look at the, if you look at this chart, yeah. The numbers that are in here are what actually went out the door in 2022 and 2023. And then we've got a forecast for 2024, five and six. So if we added 25, 50, and 25, 100,000 so far. Yeah, we spent about 100,000. <clears> out of uh what was it 150 was it 150 or it's more than that now right yeah, on, the, on the prior page i think you can see that it's the, the, the 20 this is the committed these are committed uh the funding not the actuals pay oh sorry yeah yeah I, 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 yeah sorry Deb, so the question that i have for this 354 um can you put that potentially on when you would see each piece of that being yes. actually out the door yeah that's on this next slide. that's the that's the okay. third the blue arrow on the, the blue bottom. down here yeah so we based the, the that that's exactly what I was looking for. Yeah. yeah we uh this year or 2024 forecast be paying out the 117 the next year 103 and 63 65 and so on the actuals here these are actual numbers that we Receive based off mm -hmm. items. That Actual's are good. <laughs> that's helpful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're real numbers. Yeah. No, that's, that's real. <laughs> um, so, yeah. um, John, when we look at this, are we, are we actually saying not that we're taking a full year's worth, but we're saying we're co we're we're committing, or if we were to do this, we would say we're committing to X percentage for 25, 26, 27. It, Is that how we would look at it, or? Yeah. It, it is how we would look at it. And I yes. have to say with due respect to this chart, which I suggested we not focus on, <laughs> is that what, if you could go back to the prior chart, we, when we vote to encumber money. Mm -hmm. We don't vote to spend it. We vote to encumber it. In a project like this, we particularly can't unencumber it. If someone it. dug a big hole in the ground, we, we can't say sorry, the payment that we- No, promised. totally get it. Yeah, right. So I think what we should focus on is encumbering. Now, the question is, as you all know, we're basically even. We don't have a reserve anymore. Mm -hmm. Could we vote to encumber in 2024? And I think 350,000 is a reasonable estimate of what our revenue is. It's a slightly conservative estimate if there's no pan, you know, no catastrophes. 350 mm -hmm. to 400,000 of what our revenue would be in 2024 for the full year. Mm -hmm. Could we encumber more than 350 to 400,000 in the in 2024 knowing that a number of our programs but particularly this one don't spend it all we could choose to. But uh, the way I would like to think I about it, it to, I got to it. remind us to remind us of the risk because when we look Understood. at that another chart it looks so it's very not risky. If we're encumbering more than what we're going to get in the short term, it means that there aren't going to be any catastrophes after that. Right. No, I understand. And that's the reason why then Jill is talking about, you know, doing it in in, in the menu form. Right. Um, I just wanted to understand how it was going out the door. So right. that's that's very helpful. The other thing that I just want to mention, um, which is something Cara, Carrie, Cara, Carrie had mentioned um, when she was up at the podium is... I don't think that that uh, the listserv is a good enough resource for the people who are looking for housing and may have housing and homes to share. Um, you know, I have a room that I, I put out on occasion and it, you know, either it's a hit or miss of me finding the right person who can, you know, who's old enough to climb three stairs, 
three sets of stairs to get to the room. Or, you know, but if there is a, a, a way that we can um, have a resource for that, you know, and I'm even talking to Sam over at uh, Mont Montfair, you know, is there a way to have a resource so that these rooms that come available, when they come available, there's a place and a resource for that that's, um, that's known? Um, would be would be I think would, you'd you'd end up with more of those uh, six months rentals and even home shares. Yeah, uh, Deborah, I kind of um, unofficially took that role this year. Um, I've reached out personally to folks that I know have uh, long term rentals, and they keep me informed now when they have something opening up, um, so that. If I have somebody who's on my list that's reached out to me that's looking, then I, I do a matchmaking of sorts. We did this with uh, uh, a few folks earlier this year. So I'm, I'm totally open to that. So I'm, I'm surprised I don't hear from some folks, but I also. They may not uh, know. And it's not it's not just it's a yeah. whole, whole shared, not just a. Right. Yeah. yeah. We plan to do some more marketing, put some things in the paper, et cetera. But, you know. Uh, I think that would be helpful. I, I welcome that's... ideas to get the word out, yeah. uh, whether it's putting us on the, the town hall website, a link to, for housing or or something else. But uh, yeah. yeah, call me, <laughs> email me. I'm, I'm happy to help in any way, but sometimes I just don't know. But what yeah, I and also I think that, that being a, a known resource for a landlord who wants to do this, but is concerned about what it means to have a long-term rent uh, renter and also for the renter, you know, those of us who didn't get in, you know, before it all took off, you know, the getting homes, um, you know, there are some things that are going on um, right. that are not good, you know, for the renter and, and people who are asking for an exorbitant, um, you know, um, uh, uh, securities or whatever, you know, so um, having help in the market is helpful. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you, Deborah. Uh, Roger. Thank you, Deborah. Um, just based on what Deborah said, I, this could be a great page on the website that was SEO optimized, like where to live in Woodstock. So if you're getting a job at Montvert, um, anyway, that was just an aside. So I, I strongly urge you to support as much of this as, as your risk, your risk oh. appetite follows. I also think, and I don't know how much you want to get into the politics of this, but a discussion needs to be had with the select board about thinking of Woodstock as a regional hub and, you know, in, in many ways. And I think there would be some support in that. I think there would be some, some non-support in that too. And again, I don't know how much you want to get into the politics, but I think it's a discussion that needs to be had about thinking of us as, you know, if we don't have the water, you can't build here. So you build in Bridgewater and somebody, I think it, I think it's going to be possible to approve funding without yet uh, whatever funding we choose to approve without yet agree uh, approve or or denying the notion of expanding the geographic borders because the select board has already in there is that's definitely an issue that the select board is going to want to weigh in on it's not going to be a slam. It's going to be hard to convince them. No, I agree. And so, but I don't think that that needs to hold us no. hold us up. So I think we will. It will need to be discussed. I agree. I could be wrong, but but again, I don't think that's going to slow us down. Again, are we on track for? Does everyone feel comfortable now having a a, a discussion and vote on which parts, if any, of this program we would want to approve next month? Does anyone not feel comfortable? Todd, you're raising your hand. You're you're comfortable no oh you're not I, I'm 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 comfortable in this presentation but I'm so uncomfortable in the marketing one and they're both related because there's only one pot of gold so for no, me I, what I wanted to just what I wanted to say in thinking about what Deb said is there a way to tie in with the marketing list that we have to get people to say whether they're interested in hearing about opportunities of places that they could live in Woodstock if they so choose, and then we could target those people when opportunities arise. And because that might make me happier to spend more money on marketing if it's going to help housing. Like, is there a synergy in this at all with those 28,000 emails? Because, like Deb said, there's houses out there and 
people don't know are the right people for Deb or whoever the landlord. It has to be a fit, right? So is there a portal potential or something that, you know, you're a genius with the web. I don't know. But any synergy that can have there. Which genius are you speaking to? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All of your personalities, all of them. <laughs> I think that's a question. For, I think that's, that's a, a good point. That's a yeah. For the marketing group to think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That, you know, going forward, a huge goal for the communications is definitely targeting people to come visit here who would want to move here. And, you know, using, so there, there's that aspect. But if we're talking specifically about people coming from nearby to, um, you know, answering a job ad and needing to find a place to live so that they can work in Woodstock, that is definitely part of that incentive as, or, you know, yeah, on definitely. our goal list as well. It's absolutely. And, and yes, there's way to optimize the, the way that the platform works to target those, um, those people. Yeah, I can, I can name five people who were, had jobs who then didn't take them in Woodstock. I mean, five in one year. That's just me knowing. That's not to say other people who, you know, whether it was Yankee or Billings, you know, who can't find housing. Okay. Jill, are you comfortable to discuss? Yes. So, yeah. uh, oh, I'd ask one more question, which is really, do you want us to do any more uh, work right. on this before the next meeting? That, that's really... Being, are there questions you have about information that we can collect? Well, yeah, I would say this is all easy to look at. They don't leave it open ended like it's a menu. Really difficult. I would say that, um, you know, right? I would just say maybe categorize it a little bit more. You do options. Yeah, yeah, like option A and option B, or or maybe even three options. You, you you did suggest sort of in passing that maybe your first request yes. is forty thousand plus the rental incentive yes. program, and the other programs could come back to us later in the year i think that's a great idea if that's something that jill would consider presenting it that way i think that that's, okay. that's good it doesn't have to be the only option but that no. sounded rational when you said okay. it any, any other comments Sorry. or questions questions All right, i do have one more just one more so to go back to susie's thing if you can get people to come that bring children yeah that's it's just the more people in these places the merrier right and yeah. Because we need to pay for school and all the tax implications and all this complicated stuff, it'd be great if there is a way to add. If you have kids, we'll incentivize you in this way. That it was, it's just a legal? great idea. We should find Whoever out now. school age kids. Yeah, we'll find out that's legal. That attend. So you live and work in Woodstock, and you have ex children that would attend the <laughs> Mountain View district, right, or something. I hey, we did. We do have on the the current rental incentive has uh, what we were calling. You have the qualified tenants, which are the workers, the local workers. But if they had other people in their household, we were throwing in another two hundred bucks per person, which would basically be their kids. Um, but I mean, that's not a lot. But the, the idea. Let's not design. The there's program. a way to do it. The idea <laughs> that suggested. I just yeah. yeah. I'm assuming, okay. Yeah. Come up to the. Woodstock, um, three hundred fifty-four thousand dollars sounds like a lot, but you can't even buy a trailer, you know, um, for that would house two people. So this just seems like it's a deal, and it's what everybody wants. Okay, How Jeffrey, last comment. Just come to the podium, and then we're going to move on. Yeah, just a really quick question: um, How many of the ADUs that we've created so far contain ch school-age children? I, if any, I, I, mean, I just don't know. Okay, so uh, the two ADUs that are completed uh, right now that I showed you the case studies for do not have children. Uh, one's a studio, so uh, and the other's a one bedroom. But the one bedroom is rented to a teacher. <laughs> and I do know that our rental incentive program, um, the last one we signed up has two children. Is that correct, Jill? Yes. Okay. Okay. Good. That's 50 thank grand. Thank you so much for your time, everyone. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, Trina. Appreciate your support. Thanks, Trina. Happy New Year. Thanks, Jill. Thanks, everybody. Okay. Um, next is a, a very a brief kind of, uh, again, advance update on 
some work in process that uh, Joe and Stuart have been working on, on downtown physical rejuvenation. And uh, S Stuart, I, and I'm not sure I have, I have, I think the document I sent to you, but not the document. That's fine. We, we can use that one. one. I think you can use that Yeah, all right, so let me just share that. Um, so Joe and I are working on the, the physical downtown rejuvenation and, and we have uh, identified a, a, a variety of projects that, that we think are worth supporting. The, the, the challenge that we have come to is that by its nature, they are uh, longer term projects. So it's, it's, they're, they're longer term projects and they're integrated projects. And so what we're trying to get a sense from, from this body is just this group's interest in, in having us pursue long term integrated um, projects that fall into this category. So the first, uh, the first question that we wanted to pose uh, tonight was, um, is the physical rejuvenation does it mean does it continue to be a priority for for this for this body? In other words, given everything else that we have on our plates in Woodstock, um, is is the physical investment in the assets in the downtown area does that remain a priority? And if so, we're trying to get a sense of what the appetite is over the next decade so that we can then identify and prioritize the projects within it because the projects tend to be larger and longer term in nature without some sense of what um you know what a dream budget might be or what a what a you know without some sense of the scope of of the appetite that exists on the EDC it's hard for us to prioritize the, the the different projects that we're facing. These these are the list of of some of the items that that we're we're looking at, and um, some we've talked about ongoing maintenance. That's the 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 small items that that add up to maybe fifteen thousand dollars a year, which you know cleaning garbage cans, fixing umbrellas, that sort of thing, um, replacing and and maintaining the trees. There's the the trees are in rough shape; they need investment. Um, sidewalks, the Mechanic Street Square, renovating the green. There's a, there's a whole series of, of projects that we, we think make sense and that we think that would make the community a more attractive and um, more enjoyable place to spend time and hopefully money, both for residents and for visitors alike. So everything that we're doing is focused on the community, but it's not focused on the community exclusively for visitors or exclusively for residents it's it's enhancement that we that we think would would help both parties um the issue is that a lot of these things are integrated so if we're going to work on the sidewalks we want to work on the trees at the same time um, because for example on the main streets the if you were going to do something on the side if you're going to do something with trees you would impact the sidewalk so we have to understand but but there's the, the scope of that project is such that it probably can't be done in one year. So that would be done over a multitude of years. So I guess what we're really trying to get a sense of, uh, John, if you can flip to the next to the next slide. We are working towards presenting sort of a longer term plan that would invest in the downtown area and um, we think enhance the physical um, physical presence, amenities, I don't know what word you want to use, as I said, for both visitors and residents alike. But, but by, by the nature of the product of the projects, they are long-term projects and they are projects that once you start, you need to finish. So given the constraints that exist, we're trying to understand, for example, is there appetite on the EDC to consider a seven year, seven, you know, figure plan to be spent over a decade. Is that something that people would look at and say, we think that that sort of investment is reasonable and we could contemplate it. Obviously the details need to be acceptable and attractive and all that. We have to get contractors. It's, it's you know, it's complicated work, but there's the appetite to invest in our community in that sort of way. And that and that's really the, the because we, we don't think it it probably makes as much sense to do a we, we could do small one-year projects, but the nature of the work that we are proposing to undertake 
is a much longer term, more complicated and integrated set of projects. And so we're, we're looking to get feedback on the appetite of this body, given the other priorities that exist, for to consider those sorts of projects. Actually, you know, what Stuart is talking about, what we're proposing, first of all, is it, to me, it's very exciting. <laughs> Pardon me. Um, because it kind of ties into a lot of the other topics we've been discussing, marketing, housing, people coming to town, staying in town, living in town, uh, how much money they're spending while they're in town. And um, I don't want to plagiarize, but jumping back to Deb's comment, experience people have when they come here. That's what our focus is going to be. I mean, and it ties in with marketing and housing and jobs and everything else that we've been talking about. And enhancing that experience for everybody, the residents and visitors alike is, in my opinion, nothing but a plus, plus, plus for everybody. So what we're proposing is that Stuart and I are willing to work on this for 10 years if it's, ne if it's necessary and and um, identify um, uh, spots that I think need to be prioritized, not to be exclusive to those spots, and and get them going and and you know and make it happen. Things that we've been talking about for so long, you know, how long have we been talking about sidewalks? How long are those holes in, 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 in the sidewalk that used to be trees? How long have they been there? How long have we talked about, you know, Bentley's and, and, and what it looks like downtown? How long have we talked about, you know, what's going on on, on Mechanic Street and how that could be improved? And Stuart and I are willing to take that on. You know, in fairness, Joe, over the next 10 years. Joe pointed out that he'll be 92 when the project plan would be completed, but um, <laughs> that, that just shows he's the level. Wheel my wheelchair up. Uh, he's so in I the public domain <laughs> like, like Mickey Mouse. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I have a quick question about this. Are we allowed, I mean, we're, what's the line, John, to commit to such a long project? Are we allowed to do that? Well, that's what he was just saying about, you know, the housing thing, you know, about what's allocated. Yeah. So is there a line like, OK, two or three years, but like, is there a line or we just decide? Well, first of all, just to be clear, they're not asking for a commitment. Just I, a vibe? They're asking for a vibe because they like it. I like the vibe. That's what I have to say then. Right. But, and I think. Oh, sorry, Todd, what did you say? What? He said I he like the vibe. I like the 10 year vibe. I would love that. I love it. So I, I, I just want to. I, so I think the short answer, Todd, is that we decide. And obviously, the bigger the decision, the more care we have to take in making it. I just want to clarify. There's an associated document that was sent out with the memo that provides a couple of paragraphs on each of those ideas on the list. I just want to be clear. Stuart, yeah, okay. Joe said sidewalks, but in their memo, they basically say that many towns that are attractive places to go have sidewalks that aren't just level they're also beautiful with, like, <laughs> it could be with bike lanes i mean the point is it, it could be with a, a lot of different things we don't uh, go into we don't own the road so um you put bike lane on the sidewalk yeah so any in any event it's they're enhanced they're not just level we're not just talking about undertaking basic municipal functions that the town for whatever reason has chosen not to fund we're talking about mechanic square we're not talking about painting the dumpsters a different color. We're talking about turning it into a destination where people can eat and gather. If we're talking about bathrooms at the East End, which was one of the items in the version of the document that I should have showed it, it didn't make it onto this one. So we're talking about talking, the green. Talking, renovating the green isn't about just painting the fence, which is the current level of renovation. No, exactly. we, we may or may not like this plan, but what they're talking about is really, you know, doing to the town what we did to Teagle's Landing. I guess is is sort of a, a way to 
think of it. So again, I'm not saying pro or con. I happen to like the vibe too. So Deborah and then Michael. Just um, to give you know, you Okay, yeah. So you kind of went through some of my questions actually in that that soliloquy, you know. So I had I had questions about um about what the municipality is responsible for and, and all of those kind of things. And also trying to understand and, and what Todd said about what we're able to say, this is what we're committed to. Because as you said, some of the things that you're talking about, once you get going, you have to finish. Um, but the amounts that you wrote, 4 million to 5 million over 10 years, again, that's more than our budget each year. And so well, it's- but but four to five million, that's that's the amount that, John, I, as I understand it, that's what the EDC expects to take in over the next decade. Correct. Okay. Oh, so this project isn't that, that's not what you're asking to allocate. No. Okay. No. That's what it looked like. And I was like, how's that going to work exactly? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. No, you're no, right. No, no, no. You're right. So, um, so I'm interested in also the amounts for each one of these projects, uh, what you think they're going to be, because I like the... Um, the housing group, you know, it's like, it's going to have to be in some ways, again, Todd, agreed, like the vibe, awesome, like it, that it goes on, but it's going to have to be a little bit of a, um, uh, of a menu as well. And I think, you know, we're, we're going into an area where we've talked about before, which is who's responsible for personal buildings and things like that, that not everybody on the board is going to be necessarily agreeing with the entire list and that we kind of have to like, look at the whole and make some choices uh, is what it seems to me. Yeah. And what I would say, I don't think, I don't think, by the way, Stuart, this is great. You know, I'm I'm all for this. What I think Stuart and I are looking for right now is a feel. How does, how does the commission feel about this? But, but two, two, you know, if if it's favorable, we can come back with numbers, but right now we just want to get a sense. Are you, are you comfortable with this? How do you feel about it? Two, two quick, two quick answers to to Deb's to Deb's comment. One is um, we've struggled with this notion of of private responsibility, municipal responsibility. What makes sense for us to do? And so we've sort of moved to we've considered, but moved away from most things that are really private responsibility for the most part. We have some ideas of yeah. very focused, limited things. To John's point on the sidewalk, it's not as much replacing the sidewalks. The research we've done shows that virtually every tourist, and this is just an example, but almost every tourist-based town that you look at across the country that I've seen in different parts of the country, the sidewalks are always brick. They're not poured concrete. So as an example, that's an option if we were to say, you know, that would be attractive in downtown. And at the same time, there's tree holes that haven't been planted. So if you're going to do the tree, you're going to rip up the sidewalk anyway, if you exactly. were going to do it. So we have to figure out how to do all that stuff at the same time because the dollars, you, you know what I mean? The, the, yeah, it's so, cheaper if you do it all at once. Yeah, it's, it's so one we'll project. Do, yeah. We'll have to do it in sections over the years. Yeah. We're not going to do the whole thing at once, but we're just trying to understand the vibe is there. We'll, we'll, we'll do the budgeting. We've already done the budgeting on the trees. We've got rough budgets on the sidewalks. We want to do some work on Mechanic Street, the bathroom at the East End Park. We just... But we're trying to focus on things that would be enhancements to our existing infrastructure as opposed to basic municipal jobs or things that should be done by private landowners. Right. Just touch ups. Really right. something that moves it forward. And, like and the last thing I just want to say is that, you know, anything that has to do with the green that can update the green is just it would be fabulous for the town. And, you know, all I could say all day is bathrooms, bathrooms, bathrooms. Michael. Okay. So John is right there, actually. So we'll get a key for John's place, and that can be awesome. Between Todd and John, we've fixed the problem. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You know, I, I think in uh, round two of this conversation, what I'd be curious to learn a little bit more from you guys, and because you're doing the work and doing this discovery, is um, also the responsibility of the planning. I understand that you're spending time thinking about the responsibility of taking the action, like actually doing the maintenance. But I also like, are we the right? group to be making that type of a master plan about tree wells and sidewalks planning and zoning where the tree well lives it might be a it might be town it might be highway there's a lot of other entities that i think uh weigh into creating these kind of plans so i'm just want to make sure that we're saving your guys energy and efforts and making sure we're not duplicating efforts and utilizing all of the various 
groups, agencies, what have you, uh, that also probably would want to weigh into this kind of planning. Correct. Yeah, we agree. Joe. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I wanted to just make a point that I think a master plan is absolutely essential. A master plan is brought in to by the town, by the planning commission, by everybody, so that we're all working. Where the money comes from, there's not a very clear divide between municipal responsibility and EDC money because it's all tax money and it actually all belongs to the municipality. The fact that you have the prerogative to direct some of it is is a that is what can be withdrawn in the in the next few years if anybody wants to. So you have to spend it as if it's all it is all of our money. And mm -hmm. perhaps one thing that is important to do is not to get so attached to the is, is to develop a master plan that also has very short term things like those new bins were quite expensive. They look crap because we haven't got any maintenance money. So maybe we can have this fantastic master plan that's going to cost millions, but actually next year we can wash the trash bins and get a few more. I think that's what that's exactly what that the first item on the list is washing the trash bin. That was that was the way it actually, it actually suggested is, the way it was presented make could you could think it's an either or and I just want to emphasize or request that it's Great definitely point. a both. Okay, thank you. Right, right, yeah. All right, less com uh, possibly less comment, unless there's EDC. Yeah, I just want to say from a citizen standpoint, and I obviously cannot speak for all citizens, um, I would be very nervous about committing to a 10 year plan with a seven figure amount spent. I think it makes perfect sense to have, again, multi year projects that you approve or disapprove whenever whenever you're ready to do it. And I think, you know, people should be able to weigh in on whether or not we want brick sidewalks as opposed to something else. Um, and so so I think a master plan is a great idea, but, but encumbering any money that's not specifically, we're going to do sidewalks and trees this year would be a mistake. Yeah, sorry, I think that the request, the, the, first of all, the request is obviously not for that is not to, would you give us an approval for seven figures to do something? You know that. Yeah, yeah. But in fact, the intention is also not to develop a request to do that. The intention is to develop a vision, if I can say this, I think, which would have all of those elements and their costs in it. And then bringing forward in, over time, the items that needed to be done, although some of them, as Stuart said, would have to be done at the same time. But you wouldn't. But the intention isn't okay. Great. Seven months from now, we're going to give you a one point eight million dollar ten year proposal. Seven months from now, I think they will come. I presume, Stuart, they'll come forward with exactly what you and Jill were talking about, and Michael were talking about. Input, you know. Right. Is, 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 I don't want to put words in your mouth. Is it, that's uh, that's what I understood. They just kind of want to know: is it is it is it fruitful? For, do, do we yeah. want this? Like if we said we would like to have a million dollars to paint all the buildings pink, people would probably go, well, it's not such a good idea. Don't waste your time. I'm in support of this. I, I think that I think that the physical infrastructure of the town is, along with housing, is the single is the thing that I hear people complain about most often. It's literally, and and they don't complain. They complain to the town and they complain to the EDC, of residents and visitors. Food. Well, okay. For the, in the last twelve months, it's food. But in the last twelve years, it's 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 the well, building. The last four years, three years, it's been food since COVID. Okay, fine. Then the last twenty-one years, though, before that, it's been the buildings. Every since 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 December of twenty twenty or twenty of two thousand, which is when I got here, people were complaining about the the the, the state of the buildings. Rightly so. So anyway. So anyway, sorry, that's a long, I, I'm in favor, I, I'm in favor of the vibe. I think that it would be worth seeing what this plan, I think it'd be worth investing, even if we had to invest some small resources to put together a multi-agency plan this year, I think that would be well, well worth it. And then we would decide how to proceed. Any, are there other comments from ADC members? Does is, is that generally mean that we support the vibe without going beyond that? I support more information. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But you mean you could? Yeah. Yeah. So Stuart and Joe, is that enough support to get you motivated? It's a good start <laughs> yeah. in the right direction, I think. Okay. 
All right, good. We've, I'm going to. How do you feel to do it? I, that's great. That's all we needed. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. I'm, God, I'm, you didn't I'm, say anything for a second, Stuart. I was afraid that you weren't thinking that. <laughs> uh, a, looking off. No, we're just looking. We're, you know, there, there's a lot of great work that we need to do. And we're just, we, we got the answer we need that, that, that this group is interested in seeing the results of that work as opposed to, to not. So I, we appreciate your interest and, and uh, thank you. Thank you guys. Thanks, Joe. 92. It's nothing. Okay. Um, I'm just going to uh, share and I, I'm just going to share the screen again and, and just very quickly go through the last item on the agenda. In, in November or December, we discussed, the, sorry, at the end of November, we had a special meeting to discuss the tourism ideas. And we identified three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten categories. Really, only eight of them need work. Um, if you go down at the next level of detail, funding in general don't really need a lot of analysis. And I made notes about both EDC members and community members who volunteered. Uh, then the holidays happened, and I didn't do anything. What I would like to do is to launch a process in January. Uh, is, is to launch the following process, to put groups together, and, and I want to be careful about what we call them, whether they're working groups or just people that are working on things, um, and for the, uh, we're based, which basically has EDC members and community members and, and calling to the community for interest over the next few weeks. Uh, people who with with names without asterisks said at the last, at November 30th or December 7th, that that was something they were interested in. People with asterisks either weren't at the meeting or said they would do anything. I think Beth, me, and Todd said we would do anything. So I assigned us to fill in the gaps. And Joe, I have a question mark. I assigned you to, to beautification for sort of obvious reasons, but you can confirm or you know tell us that's okay. What I'd like to do is for each of those in group sets of individuals is a process that looks like this. Recruit interested community members. Actually, I think I recruit interested community members. Prioritize the proposed ideas. Remember that each of those groups has a page with four to 12 ideas on it. Prioritize those over three criteria. What does it cost? How easy is it to do? And how much value would we get from it? And the we is either residents or visitors or merchants or all three. Investigate the most promising ideas in greater detail. Come up with a plan for what it might take to address, to solve the problem or capture the opportunity. Based on that, reprioritize if necessary, and then present their recommendations to the EDC. And the time frame I'm thinking of is recruiting interested community members in January, having that group prioritize the proposed ideas in February, then investigating in March, April, and May, and we prioritize. And then in the June meeting, the idea is that these groups would come back and say, okay, traffic or safety or food or whatever. And here's, you know, and, and to lay those, lay those options out. And that would undoubtedly begin a multi-month process of digesting those recommendations and beginning to decide which ones we wanted to pursue and fund. All I'm asking now is, does this, does this broadly speaking feel right? And if so, then I would announce sometime in January, I would announce this without the community member column. I would just say, these are the groups. And if you're interested, and here's what your task, here's what the task is. If you're interested, contact the members of the EDC by the end of the month so that they can convene a group and, and, and work on it and so forth. And then in the February meeting, we can just have a quick check-in. Is this on track or is it gone completely off the rails? I don't want to, I didn't want to do that by myself. So one second, I'm just going to ask, ED, are EDC members generally comfortable with this or does it need a longer discussion? If it needs a longer discussion, we'll, we'll do it in February. John, can you scroll down to process? So I think there's one piece in the process that I, would want to see added to it in that like we have space and I get this is like somewhat 
uh, against the process to date, but have place for new ideas to enter into the conversation. Because if we're going to go out and be recruiting other people, residents, visitors, merchants to come in to help prioritize and like create more conversation about these, we're bound to get better ideas. Well, there were four, there were 60 people who came up with these ideas. These aren't EDC ideas. I know yeah. that we had 60 people, but right. if we're going to spend like yeah. four months with multiple people brainstorming rather than people coming up to the podium and giving us their hot take on things, like we're going to get better ideas. And so we just, we need a mechanism to take in new ideas to solve the same problems that weren't uh, like set out to solve. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I think we need, I, I think that makes sense. I, I okay. think the opposite, which is to restrict it from that makes no sense. I do think we have to be, we just have to be cautious about we're not looking for new ideas. Well, no, no, it's not that. It's really <laughs> the fact that sixty people showed up, but obviously yeah, we sure. don't want to re reject it. But sure. Yeah. Okay, so I'll, I'll build that into the. And a lot of the people who had those ideas, we should encourage them to, you know, I join these Absolutely. working groups to flesh out the ideas. So new ideas are okay, but the purpose isn't to come up with. Right. Ideas. Okay. All right. Other other comments or feedback from the EDC first, and then Suzuki. Uh, John, Larry, and then Deborah. Yeah, you know, I I sort of thought you you popped that question at the end of that last meeting as who was interested in what. I'd like to rethink, you know, what I want to be on. I don't I don't know anybody else if anybody else feels the same way, but I, you know, it just was sort of a throw out thing at the end of that that, that last meeting. That's fine. I'm fine doing that as long as we don't wait. Perfect though. But that as long as we don't as long as we don't wait until February. So we could do that via email if that's okay. If we everyone wants to take ten days and you know by the by the by ten days or whatever, that's fine. I'm happy to recirculate the list and let people reflect on it. So over the next week, is that okay, Larry? And then I'll. Yep. Oh sure, yeah. I just I don't know. Maybe I was. I, I'm oh, still in the anything just... category. I'll do whatever. No, don't tell me now. I'm going to send out an email and you can basically reflect on it and then put in your 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 votes. Thanks. Okay. Uh, Deborah? A very small comment, which is that we thought crowds, traffic, and safety kind of come together. Um, and so, Michael, if that is cool with you, you want to be on crowds as well, that would be great. But if you don't uh, want it, that, that's fine. It just feels like they they have a lot to do with each other, and it kind of happens at once. Uh, the idea is, um, the, yeah. They're, they're I mean, they're different, but they're, they're related. And Anyway, so if you if you want to do that as well, that'd be great. But if not, no worries. And the other thing I just wanted to add with what he what Michael said is that as we research, we I, I don't think there's any reason why we can't come back forward and said we researched this and we're going to change it slightly because of the research. We came up with something that's along those lines, but better. I mean, that's going to happen naturally in the process. Well, hopefully, well, yeah, absolutely, yeah. of course. I mean, yeah. All right. Any other comments from EDC members? I know Susie wanted to say something. Larry looks like he's ascending. Oh, okay. Uh, Susie? Yes. So there are some things that we can have some exceptions, right? Because like one of the big things we talked about in the meeting was um, uh, limiting tour buses, telling them they can't park downtown. You can't tell them in June. You're not going to be able to park down here. You need to tell them like in March so they can make their other plans. We're not going to. I don't think. Uh, I understand that. Then it probably. Anyway, I. I I think we can decide to have uh, groups can come forward anytime they want, I suppose. But I think that my guess is finally, in my view, that what's becoming apparent, I hope to everyone, and certainly throughout the course of this year is we cannot possibly fund everything that we want to fund. Well, we cannot possibly dedicate time and resources to everything that we want to. And so we're going to have to make choices. And the only way to make sensible choices is to make them when you have the full range of options in front of you. Having said that, we've always made decisions on a rolling basis, and there's no rule that says we can. So that's the tension. So. Again, we go and, home. I just have a question. Um, go ahead. I, I'm trying to remember what's in general because there's some things that i was interested in that yeah. aren't in this list they're, they're, are they all general they are yes okay he was next to them and this doesn't preclude us from pursuing it all right didn't put it here because yeah okay 
So I'm gonna I'm gonna send out uh, an email so that we can recirculate this the page of who's involved with what. By mid January, we'll have a picture of that. That will allow me to announce on the listserv this process and people to contact if you're interested. And hopefully, then by the February meeting, we'll have a quick check in. Do we is the schedule need to be elongated by three or four months because we couldn't accomplish anything, or are some of the groups ready to get started and do they understand and so forth? And we will get going with the analysis of a whole range of ideas, including some new ones, new, really good ones. Okay. Anything else? All right. Is there a motion to Sharon? Sharon. Is there a second? Second. Second. Any, uh, no discussion. Any all in favor? Yep. Aye. Any Aye. opposed? We are adjourned. It's 9.06. Thanks, Thanks everybody. Thanks everybody. a lot. Thanks, John. Good Bye. Good.